Recording in progress. sa sarsa. Mm, malasa! Pasok ang lasa. Pero may isang hindi pasok. Matigas ang manok. Bakit kaya? Dahil pangit ang quality ng manok, minadali pa ang pagluluto. Ay, sayang ang pera. Dapat mitikuloso. Tama? Tama! Ganyan din sa gobyerno natin. Gusto natin ng masarap na adobo. Este, matinong proseso na mula sa maayos na pagpaplano. Ang pagbili ng gamit ng gobyerno ay dapat nakaayon sa proseso upang matiyak ang pagbili ay sulit. Oo, oh, huwag muna magkamot ng ulo. Madali lang ang procurement. Hindi ito komplikado. Kailangan lang ng masusing pagpaplano at pagsunod sa proseso na itinakda ng Republic Act 9184. Ang RA 9184, mas kilala bilang Government Procurement Reform Act o GPRA, ay ang batas na nagtakda ng tamang proseso sa pagbili ng mga pangangailangan ng gobyerno, kagaya ng supplies, mga equipment, at general support services. Bahagi ng proseso ng pagbili ay ang procurement planning. Dito, nagpa-prioritize ng projects ang mga ahensya para makamit ang kanilang goals sangayon sa long-term plan ng buong gobyerno. Kasama rito ang pagtukoy sa tamang specifications at budget para sa procurement project. Lahat ng napagdesisyon ng procurement projects ng isang ahensya ay inilista sa kanilang annual procurement plan o APP kada taon. Anumang hindi nakalista sa APP ay hindi maaaring bilhin ng ahensya. Para masiguro ang matalino at wastong paggamit ng pondo. O, tapos? Para makasiguro na kumpleto at wastong lahat ng dokumento, ang ahensya ay magkakandak ng pre-procurement conference bago simula ng pagbili. Mahalaga na malino ang pagkakasaad ng specifications and requirements sa bidding documents. Sunod dito ang paglalathala ng invitation to bid para hikayati ng mga potential bidders na sumali sa procurement. Bago ang takdang araw ng pagsumiti ng bids, magkakaroon ng pre-bid conference kung saan pag-uusapan kasama ang mga interesadong bidders ang lahat ng detalye tungkol sa proyekto. Ang mga interesadong bidders ay dapat palalahanan sa deadline ng submission of bids. Hindi kasi pwedeng tumanggap ng bid lagpas sa itinaktang pecha at oras. Tandaan, na ang bid ay dapat na selyado at naglalaman ng dalawang hiwalay at selyadong envelopes 
kung saan nakapaloob ang mga required technical at financial documents. Ang technical envelope ay naglalaman ng mga dokumento na magpapatunay na eligible ang bidder na sumali sa procurement at ng kanyang technical na kakayanang i-deliver ang goods. Ang financial envelope naman ay naglalaman ng presyo na iniaalok ng bidder para sa proyekto. Isa-isang idadaan ng BAC sa Sibling Pass or Fail Preliminary Examination ang mga natanggap na bids para matukoy kung kumpleto ang mga dokumento at kung naaayon ito sa pamantayan. Unang bubuksan ang technical envelope ng lahat ng bidders. Kapag kulang o mali ang dokumentong nasa technical envelope ng bidder, hindi na bubuksan ang kanyang financial envelope. Ibig sabihin, tanggal na siya sa bidding. Kapag na-scrutinize na ang lahat ng technical envelopes, saka palang bubuksan ang financial envelopes ng mga nakapasang bidders. Laging tatandaan na hindi dapat mas mataas sa ABC ang presyo na iniaalok ng bidder. Ano mang bid ang mas mataas sa ABC ay matatanggal rin. Dahil ang ABC ang limitasyon ng presyo ng proyekto. Para masiguro ng gobyerno na hindi ito gagastos ng higit pa sa naibudget para sa taon. Sabi nga nila, spend within your means. Bubo si CE naman sa bid evaluation ang mga nakapasang bids upang, una, masigurong kumpleto at naaayon sa pamantayan ang mga impormasyon. At ikalawa, masigurong hindi labi sa ABC ang presyong ini-offer ng bidder. Pagkatapos nito, ay ira-rank ang mga nakapasang bids mula sa pinakamababang presyo. Ang pinakamababang bid ang tatagori ang Lowest Calculated Bid o LCB na isasalang sa post-qualification. Post-qualification? Ito ang proseso kung saan sinusuri ng BAC o ng Technical Working Group ang mga dokumento at impormasyong isinumite para matiyak na lahat ay tama at nasa ayos. Sinusuri rin ang mga nakaraang kontrata, pasilidad, produkto, at pati pinansyal na katayuan ng LCB para masigurong kaya nitong i-deliver ang goods. Bakit? Dahil sa ganitong paraan, masisiguro ng BAC na ang mananalong bidder ay hindi lamang basta mababa ang presyo, kundi ito ay technically qualified. Kapag napatunayan sa pagsusuri na ang LCB ay nakapasa sa legal, technical, at financial requirements, ito ay tatawagin bidder na may lowest calculated responsive bid o LCRB na irerekomenda na gawaran ng kontrata. Ah! O oh, ayan, ang proseso ng procurement sa gobyerno ay katindali lang ng pagluluto ng adobo. Kapag naplano at nahanap ang tamang sangkap, malamang walang palpak. Sa ganyang paraan, walang nasasayang. Tiyak na best quality at the best price ay swak na swak. Approve? Approve! A pleasant Tuesday morning to everyone. Mabuhay! Are you all ready for another exciting lecture for today? Can I have a thumbs up to our participants? To start our program, let us put ourselves to the holy presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. Dear Almighty and ever-loving God, we glorify and thank you, your name. You have showered us with so much blessings and your presence continuously remind us of your faithfulness and guidance. With this may humbly ask you to shower our speakers today of our greatest inspiration so that they may share the most of their knowledge, heart and soul to their respective topics. May we also absorb the invaluable knowledge experiences and put into practice what we may learn today. We pray that you bless all the committees in charge that may, we may be able to fulfill our tasks responsibly and that their objectives have set may all be achieved. Your infinite blessing would mean the success of this training. May we be a living witness of your genuine love, 
through the enactment of the knowledge acquired through this activity. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Once again, a pleasant morning to everyone and welcome to the second day of the online training for the Municipal Law Corps and its 2016 Revised Implementing Rules and Regulations, brought to you by the Government Procurement Policy Board Technical Support Office. I am Janelle De La Cruz of the Capacity Development Division and I will be your host for today's virtual activity. Just a quick for yesterday's learning session, we officially opened our program with our Executive Director, Attorney Rowena Candice M. Ruiz, as she welcomed all of us in this week-long online training event, especially for MLGUs nationwide. Then afterwards, we jump right through our first session where we have a meaningful and productive lecture with Mr. Reynaldo Villon, on the discussions of Government Procurement 101 and Efficient Procurement Measures, Simplified Posting and Electronic Submission of Procurement Reports, Procurement Updates, Policies, and Innovations. As promised, before we proceed to our program, we will be announcing our early birds for day one. So upon verification and validation of our technical team, we would like to announce our first early bird participant from uh, yesterday, Ms. Julie Mier Romano from LGU Gabaldon. Congratulations, ma'am. And for our second early bird, for our day one, Mr. Alvin Carlo Narvasa from LGU Javier, again. Congratulations, sir. And for today, we will be also giving uh, special tokens to our two early bird participants who first entered the waiting room almost uh, 30 minutes or before the program. So upon verification and validation of our technical team, we will be also announcing our first early, early bird participant from LGU Lambunao, Ms. Rosana Pasoles Lucero. Congratulations, ma'am. Our second early bird is from LGU Pila, Christopher B. Asuncion. Congratulations po to our early birds. Our event secretary shall coordinate with you on how you may claim your special tokens. So before we proceed to the training proper, let us just first set the and ambience or the vibes for our web webinar for day two. So we will be having a short energizer this morning. So all you have to do is type in your answer to the chat box. And our game for this morning is guess the gibberish. So you have to guess the gibberish word that will be flashed here. So for our first word, okay, and so we have uh, answers from LGU Gabaldon, Miss Julie, he said, she said, uh, complimentary, ayan. For our second word, 
which is medicine. Ayan. <laughs> For our third word, guess the gibberish. Miss Felma alternative. So, tama po ba si Miss Felma? And the correct answer is alternative. For the next word, guess the gibberish. Sabi ni Sir David Therapy. Ayan, ganun si Mang Hedadila. Sir Sammy, Miss Gracchi, Sir Gerson, Miss Felma Therapist. So the correct word it is Therapist. I think we have our last word for this morning. Yes, the gibberish. Sir Romeo, modalities. Ganun din si Ma'am Felma. Sir David, modalities din. Miss Christine, modalities. Miss Karen, modalities. And the correct answer is modalities. That's it. Thank you for participating in our short activity this morning. Ayan. I hope all of us now are in the same good vibes and goals for today. So a few reminders before we start our program. Please don't forget to change your name using the required format that is municip your municipal local government unit name underscore your full name for us to properly identify you and monitor your attendance to this virtual event. So at the end of our learning session, we shall be having an open forum. So please be advised that only questions related to the learning session will be accommodated by our resource speaker. So please don't also forget after the end of our program, participants are likewise reminded to evaluate the training activity and resource speakers through the Google form. So the link will be shared to you by our event secretariat in the Zoom chat box. Ayan. So, um, if nakapag-evaluate na po kayo kahapon, you can edit your responses for uh, the resource speaker of the day. Rest assured that all information gathered for this online training shall be treated with utmost confidentiality consistent with the provisions of the Data Privacy Act. Important reminders on the certificate. So, certificate of attendance shall only be issued to confirm participants who are present all throughout the five-day activity. So for certificate of completion, it will be awarded to confirm participants who successfully completed the online training, participated in the knowledge check questions, and complied with all requirements of the training. So otherwise, certificate of participation shall be furnished. So for questions and other concerns, please contact us through the email flash to your screen. And finally, we would like to inform everyone that GPPBTSO is already on social media to be updated with the latest policy issuance, trainings, and other important announcements of the GPPBTSO. All you have to do is like our Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us at the our Twitter account at Government Procurement PH. Moving on, before we dive to the program proper, let me give you an overview of the program of activities for the second day of our training. So for today's activity, 
I am particularly excited because we will tackling about the procurement planning and budget linkage, including early procurement activities. Ayan. Further, to make our discussion even more exciting, I would like to remind the participants that we shall be conducting series of knowledge check questions in this online training. So we have a jump pack session ahead of us. So please make sure to bring your in-game starting now until the end of our activity. We look forward for everyone to learn a lot from this training program until day five and the last day of our training. So, all right, let us now move on to the lecture proper for the first topic of for the topic of this online training. With that, allow me to introduce our resource speaker. It is my pleasure to introduce to you our session's resource speaker. Our resource speaker has a degree in business administration and holds two separate diplomas, one in information technology and another in teacher education major in business technology. His highest educational attainment so far is Master of Science in Information Technology at the De, De La Salle University after completing the academic requirements of the units of the Master of Arts in Education from PSU. At present, he is writing his dissertation under the Doctor of Educational Management program of PSU. He thought at the tertiary level for 13 years until he decided to focus on teaching at the graduate level from 2017 up to the present. He was the ICT director of Palawan State University from 2013 to 2015. He also held procurement positions in the past from being back secretariat, technical working group member, back secretariat head, back member up to back vice chairperson. Joining us today, Board Secretary 5 of the Palawan State University and a GPPB recognized trainer, ladies and gentlemen, let us all virtually welcome Mr. Vanson L. Limpiada. Magandang araw po sa kanilang lahat mula po uh, Luzon, Visayas, o Mindanao, saan man po kayo naroon. Sana po ay nasa maganda kayong kalagayan. I know um, uh, excited po kayo for today's topic again, like what you did, um, like what you felt yesterday. I hope uh, may ma-share po tayo sa inyo. My name is Vench and I will be your resource person for this morning and for today. Now, I, uh, please allow me to share my screen. My topic is about procurement planning and budget linkage, where I will discuss the following um, items. We will discuss procurement planning. We will discuss procurement planning and budget linkage, project project uh, project procurement management plan, annual procurement plan, uh, early procurement activities, simplified post posting, uh, and electronic submission of, ele uh, of procurement reports. And that by the end of the module, uh, we expect that you will be able to apply and incorporate the fundamentals of procurement planning, understand the basic principles of market research, and identify the relevant, relevant uh, procure, procurement projects with the uh, proper budget allocation within the given timeline. Now we start with procurement planning. Now this is a continuation of what we, you what you learned uh, from yesterday where you were shown different terms and which you defined and some acronyms which have some of you are familiar some of you are new i remember that uh, i remember that uh, we just finished our election and i'm assuming that some of you or many of you here joining us might be their first time in joining this kind of training so it's a good opportunity now uh kayo man ay merong uh, experience in leadership or in any positions in the gov elected positions in the government in the past or wala 
we hope that uh, this training or this particular session will will make it make you uh, appreciate what planning and uh, is and how it is important that we we, we consider the budget Baga naaalala po natin nung tayo ay bata pa pag pinapapunta po tayo sa palengke at pinabibili ng kung ano-ano ng ating mga magulang no kahit tayo naman po ngayon ay nagluluto sa ating mga anak o mangkin ano bibigyan po tayo o bago po natin sila paalisin is we give them a list of items to purchase and uh, normally bibigyan natin sila ng pera at sa mga listahan na yon bago pa natin nilista inaalam natin do alam natin na yun yung mga pangangailangan natin ano Medyo similar po yung idea ng procurement sa gobyerno. May pagkakaiba lang po ng konti kasi ang pera po ay nanggagaling, hindi nanggagaling sa ating bulsa, kundi nanggagaling po sa taxpayer, I mean, sa taxes na binayaran ng mga katulad nating mamamayang Pilipino. Ano ho. So ito po yung ating pinapahalagahan. Kaya po, uh, katulad po ng pagbili na, ng, ng mga bagay-bagay na pangangailangan natin sa bahay, ang gobyerno po ay may mga pangangailangan din para po maitawid nila ang kanilang pang-araw-araw na responsibilidad na pagbigay ng magandang serbisyo sa mga mamayan. Ano po. So kaya po sa definition na nakikita niyo po sa inyong screen of what procurement is, ang sinasabi po niya, it's a process of selecting services from a supplier who fits best the need. Now, ang question po, uh, of course, meron ang supplier po. It could be a contractor of supplier of goods or it could be a consultant also. Now, I'd like to stress the need. Kung kaninong need po ito, ito po ang siyasabi nating need ng mga, um, ng mga sa inyo po, MLGU, so Municipal Local Government Units. No? Uh, sa, aming, sa mga national government agencies, sa mga offices po, need nila para po magawa nila ang kanilang mga trabaho at, mga, at maibigay ang uri ng servisyo o produkto na ini-expect sa kanila ng kanilang mga kliyente ng mamamayang Pilipino. Ano po? So, ano po yung pangangailangan nila para po maitawid nila o magawa nila ang kanilang mga responsibilidad o duties and functions um, in that particular office, in our respective office. Yun po ang uh, ang need na na tinutukoy sa definition na nakikita niyo po sa screen. Hindi po yung individual, yung mga personal na need uh, ng, ng mga taong namumuno or nagtatrabaho sa mga opisina. Ano po? Sinasabi rin po dyan na kasama po dito yung proseso ng pagpili ng produkto o mga serbisyo na na kung saan nagbibigay ng value for money. Medyo big word po. Paano nga po ba tayo nagkakaroon ng value for money? Naalala po kapag yung mga bata pa tayo, nitusan po tayo ng ating mga magulang. Bumili ka ng suka, mantika at asin. At it's, it's, uh, bumili ka rin ng karne at saka ng toyo. Maalala natin na ate ka lang, kahit nagpapabili si nanay ng ganon, dahil magluluto siya perhaps ng adobo. Ngayon, kung bumalik po tayo, ang binili natin ay... ay Bumili, bumili tayo ng, uh, ng Betsy, bumili tayo ng, uh, nakalimutan na natin ang toyo, ang binili, instead of, uh, of karne, bumili na lang tayo ng, ng karne norte no, o, o ano man. Eh, pagbalik po natin, matutuwa nga po ba tayo, yung mga magulang natin, alam natin, baka nga po uh, may, may kakakibat na palo ang mangyayari. So dahil uh, sinabi nila, binigyan namin nila tayo ng pera, ini-expect nila at the end of the day na, makakaluto ako ng adobo dahil nag expect si datay, si nanay, ang mga kapatid niyo, nakakain sila ng masarap. Pero pagdating niyo, ang dala-dala niyong dineliver ay hindi yung pangluto ng adobo. Ay, uh, pareho din naman po is pag sa gobyerno. Pag tayo ay bumibili, we would like as much as possible to get the uh, what we really want and how how do we how do we how do we uh, or how do we become satisfied um, when we as soon as we get what, what we want syempre kung talagang yun yung pangangailangan natin ano po so yun din po yung sa gobyerno bumibili po tayo kapalit ng pera na ginamit natin yun na ng pera na, kin, na inintrust po sa atin ng gobyerno para gamitin para mag, maisagawa ang ating mga uh, mandato no ay kailangan din po nating bilhin yung mga bagay-bagay para makatulong ta, sa atin magawa yung ating mga responsibilidad sa mamamayan no pag sinabi mo po nating uh, value for money um it can be you you can consider that it refers to the most advantageous combination of cost quality and sustainability to meet the customer requirements. No, siya sabi po natin, hindi po yung pangangailangan natin lagi talaga ang titingnan natin dahil um, at the end of the day, ang una sa lahat, alam natin na 
ang gusto nating mangyari ay eh, masatisfy yung ating mga kliyente. Kung paano ba natin masasatisfy yung ating mga kliyente kung ang pagpasok nila sa ating opisina, naibigyan natin yung serbiso or yung produkto na hinahanap po nila sa oras, sa tamang oras, sa bill, eh, sa tamang uh, pagkakataon, oh, eh, sa tamang, ng tamang output or ng tamang, ng tamang tao, yung mga ganun po. So, sabi nga po dito, is value for money. Pa- paano po natin makukuha yun? Um, most advantageous combination of cost, quality, and sustainability. Advantageous cost to the government. So kung bibili po tayo, maaaring, syempre, pinaghirapan po ng taxpayers yung pera na yan. So gusto nila na sana naman po ay hindi natin gastusin sa sobrang mamahal, na hindi na, 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 hindi na, na naaayod, o hindi reasonable na po sa pangangailangan natin. So yung tamang presyo lang din po. So uh, quality. So ito po ba ay yung pag sinabi natin quality, yun po ba talaga ang, ang makakatulong sa atin, sa ating mga offices para po maisagawa natin, ay maitaguyod natin kung ano yung ating mandato no? para maibigay natin yung servisyo na gusto natin ibigay, yung produkto na ating gusto ibigay sa ating kliyente. So dapat po, uh, very clear na naka-attach po yun doon. At yung sabi po natin sustainability ay ikat sa cross three areas, economic, social, and environmental benefits. Kung yun po bang uh, gusto nating uh, bilihin ng mga materyales ay economic uh, ay has uh, will provide economic benefits to to the institution baka po ba sustainability po ang tinag-uusapan in terms of economic um, aspect ay kaya po ba natin siyang i-sustain bilihin over the years since yun po ay gagamitin natin over a period of time o baka naman sa so sobrang mahal lang eh hindi na po uh, sustainable ano po in terms of social naman eh, yun po ba ay kinuha natin sa tamang tao, no? social, social responsibility? Yun po ba ay kinuha natin sa tamang paraan ng pagpili ng, ng supplier na magbibigay sa atin? And in terms of um, of environmental benefits naman po, ay ito po bang item na pinili natin ay ang mga items na ma- nakapag-ginamit po natin ay hindi makakasama sa ating environment. Kung the moment po na ito ay ating i-dispose, hindi po makakasama. No? Yung mga bagay na kahit na sinasabi natin bumibili lang tayo, ay hindi na minsan iniisip ng ilan, ngunit napakahalaga sapagkat una sa lahat, pera po ng bayan ng ating ginagasos. Kaya we would like to stress that sa procurement po, kailangan po natin i-considera yung mga bagay-bagay, yung mga factors po na aking itinuran. So, lagi po tantandaan, best fits the need of um, of the different offices and your customers and the one that with or the one that va- that adds or that provides value for the money of the taxpayers or the government. Ito po ay dinagdag ko lamang in, 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 in the presentation. I'd like to stress that this is just an example, ano po, which I lifted from the uh, Budget Operations Manual. That's type of error. But budget Operations Manual. Ang pinapakita lang po nito ay yung uh, activities na ginagawa ng uh, municipal local government units um, sa pag-prepare ng kanilang um, budget at uh, related po, na, na maali pong related kung pa, pa, sa, pa, paano natin gagawin ang ating annual procurement plans. Ano po, ang sinasabi po dito, um, normally, normally po nangyayari ang, ang pla, planning budget cycle nagsisimula ng July of an election year. Kaya po by June 16, according to the 2016 Budget Opera, uh, Operations Manual, nagkakaroon na po ng issuance ng budget ko lang ang local chief executive natin. Ano po. And then, that is followed by um the budget forum where the, the budget directions and policies and uh, stress and directions uh, are are laid down by the chief local chief, exec, chief executive the local finance committee and the, uh, to the different depart, department heads with the help of, of course the budget officer and that's followed by the preparation and submission of proposals by july 15 and and this process um concludes with the submission of the executive budget um to the sangunian by the local executive uh, chief executive now this process uh, although ito yung po nakikita natin is just part of the entire process na may pinag na na, na may napagdaanan na po ang um, siya sabi po ng ng bago po tayo nagkaroon ng ng mga planning and budget ko. Paano nga po ba natin gagasos yung pera? E yun po ay nakaplano na rin. Uh, may, lahat po ng process na ito ay nagsisimula sa preparation of of, of comprehensive development plan. Ano po? And then sa comprehensive development, usually po plano, it, it involves um, five to six years. At ibig sabihin, plano po ito ng ating mamamayan, local government units, 
from national to local government units, ano ba yung mga activities, projects, and, and programs na nagagawin ng, ng Pilipinas, halimbawa, or na, na para maitaguyod o maisagawa ang kanilang mga plano. Ang gagawin po noon ay yun po ay ibe-breakdown into several years, no? Later on, kaya may AIP po tayo, na yung mga plano mo na, po na yun ay i-adapt or and i-enhance pa, i-operationalize sa mga provincial governments, no? iba't ibang mga uh, sa iba't ibang parte ng Pilipinas at kung saan yun naman po, kaya po nagkaroon tayo ng uh, local development and, and investment program at na kung saan again mahaba pa rin po yung yung horizon nito or, or coverage po. so uh, five to um, five years so five to six years now yung yearly counterpart po no yung slice ng 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 investment program na yun, ay tiyatawag po nating annual investment program. Example po na nakikita niyo sa screen, although na medyo maliit po siya, is just a, a snippet or a thumbnail or a picture of the form used in preparing the annual investment program. Dito po nakapaloob yung programs, projects, and activities implement, to be implemented by different offices and departments, scheduled po ng implementation ng project, programs, and activities na yun, na naka-align po sa mga, sa mga thrust and direction ng national government, and provincial government, and po expected output and so on and so forth. Doon po sa mga items na yun, meron po mga schedule of implementation. Ito rin po yung nag, uh, nagtumutulong na uh, ma-guide ang mga local government units, let's say municipal local government units, um, to prepare their, uh, to, to plan the procurement, their procurement activities for a year round. So, kung mapapansin po natin, ang ating po activity sa local government unit, ay, ay, units ay nakatali or naka, dapat po nakakatulong sa plano ng national government, provisional government. Kaya every year, kahit sabihin natin, oh, we have to plan every year. Pero ang totoo po niyan, kasi mula pa lang po, meron na po tayong napakahaba na uh, meron po tayong strategic plan tawag po sa national government agencies at sa, sa atin po is comprehensive development plan na kung saan kinukuha lang po yung part ng taon na kung saan meron mga plano. Ginagawa lang po natin, we, uh, we, we inject specific activities and programs to be able to carry out those programs. Ano po? So yun po ang pinapakita nito. In short, ang, ang pagpaplano po ng procurement dapat ay nakatali po sa ating budget. Ibig sabihin, Um, inaalam po natin kung kailan tayo magkakaroon ng budget, kung kailan po kung kailan tayo hihinga ng local chief executive ng plano natin kung anong bibilihin at, at kung saan tayo magbabase ng da at dapat bilihin. So hindi po sa kung ano yung gusto lang natin, kundi nakabase po ito kung, papa, uh, kung ano yung mga gusto ng national and local government na, ma na maisagawa sa level po ng uh, municipal local government units. No? In the form of programs, projects and activities. Ang susunod, ang nakikita po natin is also an adoption of, of the presentation from um, uh, that shows how planning is done in the local government units. Meron po tayo mas malaki, mas malaki at mas komprehensibong plano na local development plan na kung saan kin, uh, kinukunan po natin ng mga specific programs, plans and activities na kinakaskade sa mga sa provincial level para po ma, 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 masigurado na yung uh, provincial activities ay nakahanay po or naka naka harmonize with low, with, with national development plans no so kaya po meron po mga provincial development plan and physical plan, framework plan or comprehensive development plan na sinabi ko po kanina from the comprehensive development plan ay eh, kinukuha po eh, meron po mga local development investment plan yung mga municipalities and cities ano po na kung saan makikita natin nakatali din po siya doon sa provincial development plans at para naman po mai ma, ma, isagawa sa iyong mga activities sa isang taon kinukuha po doon yung annual investment plan. Kung do doon po nakabase yun. Ano? Kaya tayo pong mal eh, municipal local government units, um, although meron po tayong mga iniisip na mga plano, this plan is telling us na ang gobyerno is willing to provide money or su financial support to programs and activities that will contribute to the attainment of the overall plan of the Philippines. Ano po? So in ito po sa annual investment plan, dito po ina-apply natin yung procurement planning ano po, under RA9184. Okay. Now, ito po ang sales pinapakita po nito, yung continuation ng pinakita ko kanina. Doon po sa level ng preparation ng AIP, merong schedule of implementation na kung saan 
um, yun po ay parte, yung, yun po ay basis ng preparation ng procurement plans. Ano po yung ginagamit natin ng, sa pag-prepare ng procurement plans? Yung nasa pangalawang uh, list of bullets po, preparation ng PPMPs, PPMPs po yun. Uh, yun po ay ina-append or ina-attach po natin ano, sa ating budget proposal. Sa makikita po natin sa activity ng local government units na nasa kanan, yung sa pangatlo, in the, uh, the, they are submitted no, to the budget uh, officer um, uh, kasama po yung ating mga project procurement management plan no at uh, inaalam po ng budget officers kung naka-align po ba sa sa sa, sa uh, budget policies and directions ng municipal government units ang ating mga planong bilihin kung hindi maaari po yung matanggal no so uh, ito na po mga PPMPs na ito ay kinoconsolidate pinagsama-sama pinagsasama-sama para po makapag-create tayo ng annual yung procurement plan, no? Big sabihin mga planong bilihin sa loob ng isang taon ng lo ng municipal LGUs. No sino nga po ba talaga ang ang uh, da- responsable, ang mga key players sa budget LGU budget preparation? Ang sinasabi po ng ating uh, um 2016 budget operations manual, ito po yung mga importanteng mga tao, komite na kailangan ng doon parte ng pagpaplano. Meron po tayong local chief executives ang ating pong mayors, no? Um local finance committee, uh, heads of the different uh, departments and offices, heads of uh, of the local economic enterprise and the public utility services, our uh, civil society organizations and private sector groups, local planning and development coordinator, local accountant, budget local officer, and local treasurer. So isila po yun ang tutulong-tulong para po may, ma, 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 pa-prepare yung budget na kinakailangan po natin. Kaya po, kung itong mga taong ito ay may hinihingi po sa atin, ano, or tayo po ay may hinihingi, tayo po yung mga na ito, tayo po yung makikipagtulungan sa mga iba pang office or units or officials na nakikita niyo sa screen in the preparation of our municipal budget. Pagdating naman po sa procurement preparation or procurement planning preparation, medyo may similarity but um, this is already more of a uh, Uh, confined to a particular agency or department na kung saan uh, ang mga nagpaplano po para kung ano ang bilihin ay pinangungunahan po lagi ng approving authority or the head of the procuring entity. In, in the local government units, alam natin na ang, ang head of the procuring entity is the local chief executive. Ano po? Now, so alam niya ang plano ng, ng, ng uh, municipality, alam niya rin ang ang uh, ini-expect natin na alam niya rin kung ano yung mga bibilihin ano po pa oy ng 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 local ng LTU para po maisagawa yung mga plano na yon kasama rin po sa plano din syempre ang ating mga bids and awards committee na nagko-consolidate ng mga different plans at ang back secretariat na tumutulong sa back para isagawa yung kanila mga duties and functions as back particularly the consolidation of the PPMPs no and many other administrative support that they can provide to the bids and awards committee we also have the end users who per- perform a very critical role in the process because um you will realize later on na talagang without the the, the full and 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 the um, full participation of the end users tayo po sa Beijing Awards Committee and other officials in the organization might suffer in the, the, the non-participation of or weak participation of the end users, particularly when they do not prepare the, 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 the needed staff work or they, they, they prepare the, they do not prepare the the acceptable um, technical uh, requirements for the proposals and magkakaproblema po tayo. Then, ang nagsasabi naman po kung may pera para sa ating mga plano para bilihin, syempre yung ating budget officer. Ano po? Kaya, talagang we are friends with the budget officer. Not because, of course, the budget officer, eh, hindi naman po niya sabi na, okay, may budget para dyan. Ang sabi niya po, may budget para dyan da, at yan po ay, ay at yung gusto niyong bilihin ay naka-align sa kung ano yung gustong ipa-implement ng ating lo- local government units. Hindi dahil may personalist, per- personal nilang gusto suportahan yung, yung project, kundi inaalam lang, alam lang nila ganyan budget officer na yan po yung gusto niyong bilihin ay naka, naka-align sa plano ng ating local government unit. And then yung technical working group po, ano, sila po yung tumutulong sa Bits and Words Committee in evaluate proposals, uh, conduct a post-qualification, and other functions na medyo critical or technical po para sa Bits and Words Committee. So ito po yung mga key players in the procurement planning. They, they, they put together a good plan to make sure that our respective institutions come up with a very good procurement activity year-round. Now, ano nga po ba ang sinusunod natin mga local government units 
and even in the national government agencies na paradigm in the procurement. Kapag tayo po ay bibili-bili, kung tayo po ay gagamit ng pera ng gobyerno, taxpayers' money, um, alam natin kailangan maganda ang paraan, hindi mapubunta sa katiwalian, hindi, mapu- hindi masasayang. Kaya meron tayong laging sabi paano ko magagastusin yung pera na in-interest sa atin. Yung nakikita niyo po is paraan na, na, na gustong isa puso at gusto na, nating lahat na sana isa puso at isa isip ng bawat mamamayang Pilipino or official ng government na whenever they do procurement planning. So, um, ang sinasabi po dito, kung, ta- ang, ang, kung matatandaan po natin kanina nung tayo ay nag-define what procurement is, sinabi natin na it's, it's the satisfaction of the need no? of the agencies um, that, that will help it carry out its duties and functions. No? It's the, the, we will, that need, paano nga po ba natin sa satisfy? Then this shows you, diagram shows you the how with the process and the, the, each, the, the specific requirements that, that are usually um, conducted or provided uh, during each, each process. Now, there are four, this is, so, this is, there are four quadrants here. I'm sorry, there are four um, boxes here in this quadrant. The first box is uh, from left, no? It is the first activity to be done. This part of, of, of um, uh, procurement uh, activity involves the conduct of cost-benefit analysis, feasibility study, market study, and the, and the preparation of project procurement management plan. Dito natin, bakit identify or identification? Inaalam natin dito, ano nga po ba talaga ang pangangailangan ng ating ahensya o ang ating office para maisagawa yung ating mga um, tungkulin no? bilang LG officials, bilang uh, empleyado ng, pamahal, no, ng lokal na pamahalahan ng kung ano mga municipality. Na kung tayo po ay may mga proyekto, inaalam natin kung ano yung kailangan natin bilhin para maik- maik- makandak o magawa natin yung proyekto na yon. Now, for example, meron po tayong gustong gawing training. Ano po yung mga pangangailangan ng uh, cost-benefit? Anong klaseng training gagawin natin? Will it be face-to-face? Will it be... Um, Will it be uh, virtual? No? So cost-benefit, saan na mas magasos? Will it be face-to-face or virtual? So the, you, you compare the cost, although there are many alternatives, we, we try to know, we analyze, ano ba yung will, which, which um, option will provide the, uh, the best value for our money? Ibig sabihin, hindi masyadong magasos para sa gobyerno, but will provide the same best uh, go, uh, best result or expected result. Feasibility study, for example, in projects na bago, now, we are not sure whether it will be successful or not in terms of economic aspect, financial aspect, viability. I mean, the, 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 we conduct feasibility studies. So these are very critical to uh, new programs which, which you want to implement in your respective LGUs. No? And market study is most likely most of the time, no, the issue is expected um, being done by different uh, procurement officials or employees na kung, that, that, that allows them to know what really are the available items in the market for them. Na kung baga, kung tayo ay magkakan, kailangan ng mga computer, ano ba yung mga available computers in the market right now? The market, the market study will tell us yung prices, the technical specifications, the sources na pwede nating pagkunan. No? So inaalam po natin yung sa market study dahil napaka-importante po nito kung uh, napaka-importante po nito dahil kung hindi natin gagawin, maaari pong sabihin natin na manghuhula lang tayo, eh hindi po magiging maganda yon. So we will not be able to get the best value for our money. Now, to capture everything, to put everything into writing our plans, where, where what are the technical specifications, what would be the best alternative or option, nilalagay po natin yung sa ating PPMPs or Project Procurement Management Plan. So there... Uh, after we identified everything, we make sure na yun po ay susundin natin buong taon. Ano po? Kaya meron po tayong PPMP. Pagkatapos po natin malaman ko ano yung pangailangan natin na gusto i-satisfy by the, at the end of the year, eh, eh nilalagay na po natin yun sa ikinokonsum. Eh, meron na pong office para uh, susunod po doon ay ang assessment of their the, the assessment um, part. Assessment, uh, part no? What do we assess? No? We assess our readiness for the, uh, ready, the readiness of the institution to conduct procurement. Meron ba tayong um, 
for example, I'll start with the de- determination of readiness. How ready are we to to start with our procurement? Naalala po natin, baka may mga agencies po na nag-iba, nagpe-prepare, na nagpe-prepare lamang ng project procurement management plan uh, na isang papel or, or dalawang papel, depende ko na yung nakasummary, no? or nakasummarize na items. Ang totoo po doon, anong tayo po ay nag-conduct ng FS, ng market study, ng cost-benefit analysis, may reason po kaya natin ginawa yon. One of the reasons, another uh, in addition to knowing what are the available I, um, ma- items in the market, uh, alternatives, other options, um, the prices, the, the possible uh, suppliers or bidders, we also, in addition to knowing those things, sa pati kumukuha din po tayo ng mga supporting documents to what we found out. For example, we found out that uh, um, there are these are the computers available. Then we get copies of that. Ano po? These are the prices available. Then we, we do have a document that will support that. Um, because when we prepare the technical specifications like in the form of uh, terms of reference, yun po yung ginagawa nating attachment para hindi po sabihin ng sino mang tao na tayo po ay official, na tayo po ay na gumamit po ng uh, TSL method. Ano po yung TSL method? Sige nga po. TSL, Tango Sierra uh, Lima. No? <laughs> Tingin sa langit, ano po, hindi po maganda. May mga, uh, tinanong ka, magkano kaya ang presyo, titingin lang tayo sa langit. So, hindi po magandang practice ang paggamit ng PSL sa pag sa paglalagay uh, ng presyo or approve budget for the contract. Dahil po, hindi lang po kasiguraduhan. At makakasigurado po tayo kung mayroon tayong mga supporting documents na kinuha o ginather from the people. We talk to agencies that we visited, businesses or industry that we but we, we pay the basis just to be able to know kung meron talagang items ganito or merong mga items that will suit the requirements of our entity. So, ina-assess po natin yung readiness. Now, kung meron na po tayong mga ganong documents, hindi lamang yung, yung PPMP, kundi, la, kundi yung completeness of the supporting documents. Dahil kung tayo po ay magpapatayo, for example, ang LGU decides to put up uh, a school, uh, an LGU, no, not a school, but an LGU hospital or uh, barangay health clinic. No? Na, yung po ba, meron, d- dapat pag na, meron kayong PPMP, yun po ba ay shovel ready? Pag sabi natin, shovel ready, abay, kompleto na po ba kayo sa mga detailed engineering requirements, sa de- detailed engineering designs, no? y- um, yung mga uh, program of works. Kung tayo po ay magsusunod lamang sa ideal way of preparing the PPMP, so po sabihin po ay may mga supporting documents na rin po. Dahil ang ini-expect po natin, pagdating po ng assessment, mas magiging ready po ang isang institution for procurement kapag ready din po ang mga documents to support procurement. Kung hindi po, then we are, we, perhaps we are not that ready yet. Then, madidelay din yung process. Again, this is the process. Kung ready naman po na, then uh, when inaalam din natin how, how, how ready we are in terms of the availability of required documents. Like, we are not expected, we are not allowed to, to, to procure anything without an approved ABP. Therefore, dapat meron po tayong approved ABP, ina-assess natin, meron ba ako, no? Kahit may, oh, wala pa. O baka ano pong level na yung approval ng ABP, baka nasa indicative pa lang kami, ay hindi pa pala kami pwedeng mag-award, mga ganun pong bagay. We also decide yung procurement method. No? Um, naalala po natin sa, ident- sa identification, no? yung PPMPs are prepared. Here, the, the, during assessment, these PPMPs are consolidated into annual procurement plan. Now, when these are uh, consolidated along um, into an annual procurement plan, makikita ng bids and awards committee kung ano ba yung pag pinagsama-sama nila, yung mga items that are similar. So, pagsasama-samayin mo yung mga equipment, pagsasama-samayin mo yung, uh, yung mga stationery, pagsasama-samayin mo yung mga furnitures, mga ganun po. Tapos, pag pinagsama-sama yung presyo, makikita na, ah, ito pala, abot ng 3 million. Dapat ito ay... Um, ito ay competitive bidding. Ay ito ay ah, maliit lang to. Pwede itong alternative method of procurement. So yun po yung mga modalities na pwedeng gamitin or apply para mag, i-apply para mabili po yung gusto nating bilihin. Now, ang, mag, ang maglalagay po noon sa annual procurement plan yung mod, uh, modality, procurement modality, or procurement method will be the, um, although it's recommendatory, um, but that they're the one deciding on it no ay ang mga bid, ay ang bids and awards committee no now um this is also the stage where we, where we review the feasibility of market studies so makikita teka muna itong project na to based on feasibility is not feasible this year perhaps you can do it next year so um that's also the part where that is also being done now identification 
and assessment. Those are the activities we do no? um, during the, uh, the shown in the first two quadrants. The third uh, box shows you, uh, this is the part where we start the procurement process. So it's a procurement stage. No? Ano ba yung mga procurement stage? Pinakita sa inyo kahanda. I think during uh, during your last session that these are the, the different stages of procurement. Ito na po yun from post, uh, posting of advertisement opportunity to award and, and, and um, entering into a contract with a winning leader, no? So, uh, or contractor, supplier, or consultant. So, yun na yung procurement activity. And ang pinakahuli po is the implementation uh, of that project. If it's, for example, um, there is the, that is a construction or infrastructure project, then it will be implemented. Construction will come in and then up to it. Uh, if it, if it's goods that you, uh, you want to purchase and there will be the del acceptance, a uh, delivery and acceptance of these items and then payment, all of these are part of implementation. Now, if all of these uh, um, boxes these boxes or those that you see in this diagram are satisfied or that you look into this one by one you made sure that these are all conducted you are most like you are most likely to feel satisfied if you are the entity you know at the same time your our clients are most likely to feel satisfied with the service that they need because if you are able to get what you want from 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 doing all of these activities and what you really want uh, is aligned with the pro uh, program the PPAs or programs, projects, and activities of the local government units, most likely that will also leave a smiling face, uh, a smile, leave um, a smile in the faces of our clients. And so they will be more satisfied. If we are satisfied, they will also be most likely be satisfied of our service. So this is the pro project, the Philippine procurement paradigm. Hopefully uh, you appreciate it. Now, however, it's not always the case. No, it's not uh, it, not all the time. As uh, our clients are satisfied, we are satisfied. But there are factors that wh why that happens. And ba ba based on the GPPB findings, majority of these uh, of the causes, no, um, these are these are mainly caused by poor. Um, these are mainly associated to poor planning, specifically. Uh, based on the the APCPI report, re reports, pinapakita doon na uh, most of the government agencies encountered a problem because of poor planning, particularly because of poor cost estimates, problems on technical specifications, and ter terms of references. Sa sabi, ay, kaya pala talaga napakahirap. Hindi po kayo nag-iisa. No? Hindi naman talaga mahirap kung uh, gagawin natin, um, ipafollow natin yung tama, ginawa natin yung dapat ginawa natin sa silong mula pa lang, mas madadalian po tayo sa dulo. Excuse me. Pagpasensya niyo po ako at kailangan kong I have to make sure that my um, my my mouth is wet kasi mahihirapan na ako mamaya magsalita. Uh, with so much enthusiasm coming out of my mouth, sometimes nadadaray po yung lalamunan ko. So, I have to make sure that my, my lalamunan is lubricated. Now, um, 22% ang, ang problema, no? end users late submission of the purchase request. So, alam niyo po yun, uh, teka, pag ako pala, uh, nag, nag, uh, alam na po natin ngayon na kapag late ang karamihan ng purchase request, late din ang procurement. Uh, yun, yun po. Other problems is, approval review process problem, late release of special or allotment release order, the low number of meters, makikita po natin medyo malaki, 22%. Bakit nga po ba kaya low ang ang uh, ang uh, ang participation ng mga bidders? May mga factors din yun. Ano? Minsan, uh, based on experience, we realize na, thank you po, we realize na this, when we ask these contractors, teka sabi na, hindi masya, masyado namang mababa yung ano, masyado namang mababa yung price yung ABC, malulugi kami so they tend not to participate anymore. No? So, you know, the, that you should remember, we should understand that the RA9184, this law does not only protect the interest of uh, the government, but also protect the, uh, the, this law balances the interest of the government agencies, the procuring entities at the, at the same time, the suppliers, the bidders, the contractors, or the industry who participate in the bidding. So we, the, their interest is to, of course, earn. No, kaya naman sila nagbibusiness because they also want to earn. Kung tayo, eh, kung 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 hindi 
hindi naman sila kikita, why will they participate? And it's just one of the many factors that that uh, that are true uh, and have to be considered. Kaya dapat, kung tayo po ay mag estimate ng cost, doon papasok yung idea na, teka, ito bang cost ko is included or covered all the possible costs which may be incurred by the leader kung magpa-participate sila. O ito yung cost na baka iniisip ko lang yung, yung acquisition cost lang. No? Yung mga ganong problems po. Then later on, we will try, we will discuss it. Another problem is inadequate training of uh, varying interpretation of rules. Kaya po, 3%. Kaya po, uh, ang GPPB is very aggressive in conducting trainings like this, which which we applaud, no? uh, which we appreciate the uh, in in aid of um in aid of or in pursuance of the need to support and uh, kumbaga uh provide guidance to our local government units and national government agencies particularly those who are new in the procurement um uh procurement in procurement um to know more about how procure RA 9184 should be conducted. You know? So there are trainings like this uh, that are really for you, and I'm happy that you are here with us. No? And finally, uh, you have lack lack of manpower. Now, uh, again, this is another problem. Sabi ka nila, ay, wala kaming masyadong bits in awards committee to do this. Wala kaming technical expert to help us do this. Wala kaming back secretary to do that. I mean, those are the problems that they take, that they feel or these government agencies thought na contributed to the lays and delays and failures of bidding so this is here because you have to tell you have to be able to know that these could be the same problems that you will encounter if you will not um conduct or if you will not prepare yourself in advance or no if you're not you will not be proactive meaning if you will not be thinking about the possible problem and um avoid them uh this will be the outcome. So we would, would like to avoid it. Kaya pinapresent po natin ito sa inyo. Now, ang tanong, um, given those challenges, going back to the procure, Philippine procurement paradigm, saan nga po ba dito makikita ang, ang saang boxes nakikita? One, two, three, or fourth box. Mapapaloob yung problems na yun. Yung, yung 50, where, 50, where plan, there is poor planning, no? Where, uh, that the previous slide shows that 50 percent of percent of the failure of the bidding is attributed to that. No, San Puba, you can guess three, two, one. So, nasa first and second quadrant, po yun, no? makikita po natin dito na yung planning that that's part of planning activity of the agency. So, kaya in this particular um, presentation, we would like to stress the importance, of course, of planning to the entire procurement process of every institution. Kaya, pay attention everybody. Now, ano nga po ba ang procurement planning? We would like to know kung anong ating gustong bilihin, kung kailan, ilan ang kailangan nating bilihin, at ay, na, ilan ang ating kailangan. <laughs> Hindi po ang gusto, kundi ang kailangan. You know? There's a difference between need and wants. <laughs> so, ilan lang talaga ang kailangan natin? Ano nga po ba yung detalye ng kailangan natin? Ano? Uh, yun ba talaga ang kaila kung tayo ay we intend to 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 uh, say for example our agency one of the mandates of our agency is to process permits and licenses uh, but in the history we found out that we can release uh, permits and licenses within 10 days from the, the submission of the request in other words 10 days ang yung la, ang, ang paghihintay nila you would like to improve that and you would like to to reduce that to 3 days no ayun kung bibili ka ano ang kailangan mo bilihin para magawa mo yun i mean not bibili but you will have several alternatives or strategies number 1 pwede nga strategy mo will i hire more people hmm. second pali second Ah, bibili na lang ako ng uh, equipment and facility para kasi uh, yun ang pwede kong gawin. Now, let's leave, let's say you have two options. Um, ano yung detalye, I mean, I said earlier na you need to conduct cost-benefit analysis. Sayin mo, aling ba sa dalawa, yung magpo-provide ng best results or benefits to the institution? Will it be procurement of the item or the hiring of the of of new um, employees, no? Well, most likely based on experience, I think that you will arrive at uh, procuring equipment and facilities. That yeah, you don't need to uh, pay a monthly uh, 
ano ra, uh, monthly uh, salaries of and wages of these employees no and you only have to maintain yung so, yung, yung in for example electricity the computers no so most likely ganon now if that's what you need no based on your based on your cost benefit analysis then you already know that 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 what you need to procure are computers and printers no and yung detalye noon technical specifications if it, there are so many of um other factors that you need to consider like um consider like um, terms of reference you have to prepare warranty warranty period mga ganun po so mga detalye na gusto nating malaman um ano po ba yung quality na gusto natin? So, inaalam natin yung requirement planning. Hindi yung kung kailan na darating yung pangangailangan, saka lang tayo mag-iisip ng kung anong requirement. Ano po? Ano pa? Sa procurement planning, we also identify magkano po ba yun? No? Kung tayo po, noong pa lang January, ng budget call, na expect na budget preparation um, as early as January of the, of the operative year, alam na natin na by uh, ate ka by June 16 okay hihinga na magba budget ko most likely ito na yung pa um magmamadali na kami so as early as January up to June or before June meron na kayong preparatory activities like you go to you can do feasibility study you do market study you do um initial planning activities inaalam niyo na kung magkano ka at siya para pag magigbagating ng June madali na lang magsasabit na lang kayo at complete staff work na yun may supporting document no nakalagay din sa planning na kinaka uh, required na malaman natin kung kailan natin kailangan yung product or service niyon kaya nakalagay doon kailan ko to bibilihin dahil kung kailangan niyo sana ng, ng June for, of course you make sure na nabili niyo before June yung mga ganung activities so inaalam natin yon at inaalam din natin kung si may posibleng may pagkukunan tayo ng ng product or service na yon no so inaalam natin yon kasi kung wala baka we need if we do not know for example we did not do kanda uh, we did not do market study and we just found out that there is no local supplier and the, the supplier and your abc is just say um you would like to purchase x number of items ng computer units wala pala din sa inyong municipality pero nasa manila so anong mangyayari sa so, sa abc ninyo it did not include the cost of delivery no so yun yung example na if you know that your source will be from somewhere else there are associate there are factors that you need to add cost factors that will be added na yung yung abc ninyo might have to be increased by a certain percentage to be able to cons- to include the cost of freight mo ganun ano yung mga additional cost associated with it now planning objectives of course um allow si ano nga po ba yung objectives why do we need to why do we actually plan number one is we schedule for us to be able to schedule in advance hindi tayo laging nadi-delay no kasi po um sabi nga nila may although this is as applied to to uh in the law na just this um delay this um uh, uh just this delayed uh ano na ngayon uh, if the decision on the case is delayed justice is also delayed no in the case of procurement in the case of procurement kapag na delay ang pag pag procure ng isang item for example um or uh let's say there is a demand for local demand for barangay health um un, uh lg hospital so municipal hospital and uh, that has been a plan of the lg for quite some time and you plan to have a hospital operating by june so dapat before june may na construct na yon and by june alam na binigyan ka ng gobyerno na okay sige meron ka ng sa iyong um appropriation ordinance nakapasok doon may 25 million ka Kaso pagdating ng Ju- kapagdating ng supposed to be March eh nakapagbidding na kayo nakita mo na hindi kumpleto ang detailed engineering requirements. So madidelay ang procurement mo. Eh yung sabi eh, ng plano, plano kung maganda to no. Ang plano niyo ay by June meron na kayong hospital. Ibig sabihin you are expecting that benefits will already be uh, uh, derived from that project by June onwards. In other words, yung pati yung benefits that will be derived, derived from the project will be delayed. So, kung hindi po nagpa-plano, kaya po nagpa-plano tayo ng maaga para po ma-deliver yung project, ma-deliver yung goods as planned. Maiwasan po yung um, delayed in service or uh, 
un, 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 unfavorable outcome because of the delays in procurement. And it also helped ensure the overall goal, that the overall goal of the institution are achieved effectively and efficiently. Now, like I said, going back to my example, if, if your goal is to prove, um, be, uh, is to, to put up a, a, a local hospital because the, the next hospital, the closest hospital is like um, 100 kilometers away. Um, and, and, and your local people, your, your citizens are already expecting it. Hmm, ma disappoint sila. Now, your goal is to put up a hospital. If you plan ahead of time, um, you'll be able to use the money uh, in a timely fashion. You'll be able to come up with a very good, uh, put up a good hospital. You'll be able to... Um, to uh, use the other your other concerns in preparation of other parts of the project that needs to be there, no? Like people who will be working in the hospital, you can use the other some other your time, other time, remaining time to conduct or to to do other activities that will yield a better result for your project. So effectivity and efficiency of, of, of the achievement of the overall plan will also be possible if you do. Uh, plan in advance. It all planning in advance also precludes unnecessary purchases and circumventions. Ano ba yung precluding ibig sabi na iiwasan niyo yung mga hindi kinakailangan o nararapan na paraan ng pagbili. Ma, may mga um, government officials or employees or offices po kasi na ano, we kila na, na na kung saan bumibili ng mga items sa so wala naman sa PPNP dahil ang um, excuse po nila ay may emergency situation. So, hindi naman po kahit po hindi na doon within the ambit of the, the legal definition of what constitutes um uh emergency, ay sige pa rin po silang paggamit ng term. No? There is, even if there's no threat to life or property, abay, may emergency pa rin. Yung pala, gusto niya lang gumaya. Now, ang nangyari tuloy na pilitin silang bumili sa, at gumamit ng isang, ng, ng, sa paraan na hindi in accordance with the law. No? Dahil nga meron or kahit at to may emergency, pero hindi na anticipate in advance. Now, those are cases wherein you might be found circumventing or violating the law, no? Just because um, there is a chance and using the, the urgency of the situation as a a, a, a uh, convenient excuse, no? Para lang para lang ma-justify yung wrong action. So, but if you plan in advance that you anticipate even that there that 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 such problem occur in it possibly may possibly occur, then pwede mo siyang ma-avoid or when it occurs, you'll be able to get away from it or solve it um, in a timely fashion. Of course, when you plan in advance, you you obtain the value for the money. It's my it's government's money. Um, you'd be able to purchase an item which is in accordance with what you need, uh, which is in accordance with help. I mean, which will help you carry out your your the programs, projects, and activities, which will not be harmful to the or to the environment, which will not be um, of favoring any uh, prospective uh, bidders na kakilala or close a business awards committee. And you get which will provide you the good service. Uh, the best uh, with the best price in the best source in an on a timely fashion. So that's that's how we get the value for our money. So these are the different um, things that we, which will benefit. Uh, these are the, the object. These are the objectives of procurement planning. Now, uh, without if, however, however, they, these objectives may only sound idealistic and. For some of us, seem easy to do or to realize, but really, in real life, there are still challenges in the procurement planning. Ano yun? Paano hindi natin? Paano hindi natin yung mga pagkakatao na hindi natin makukuha or marirealize yung mga objectives na yun, no? That the one that's going to keep us away from the realizing those objectives is number one when we lack the uh, or when we lack or we have insufficient proper market study and cost benefit analysis. Hindi tayo naganda noon. Number two, hindi tayo nag-prepare ng, uh, hindi natin naisama yung pangangailangan natin na pinlala natin sa PPMP. Ang ginawa lang natin, nag-copy tayo last year, copy-paste, nilagay sa, sa taon ngayon. No? Uh, ano pa? Lack or wala tayo or limitado yung training or experience sa pag-prepare ng mga terms of reference, preparation of uh, purchase request and technical specifications 
kulang ang ating mga kaalaman doon. No? So all of those things, all those three things, if we continue to do it, no, um, those are the, th- the major causes of failure of feeding, delays in procurement, and of course, ineffective procurement. Pag sinabi natin ineffective na ko, most likely dapat talagang overhaul yung system of the procurement. But that those can be avoided, no? Um that's the reason why we discuss it today, no? Those can be avoided. That's why you have to make sure that we we going back to the procurement paradigm, if you do all of those things, you're most likely to avoid these problems. Now, we move to the knowledge check. I'll turn you over momentarily to our at the GPPB associate. Yes, ma'am. At this point, we will be having our first knowledge check for this topic. So the same po with uh, day one, you will be selecting your answer via the Zoom polling feature. So our first question is, Procurement planning is the process of identifying which project needs can be best met by procuring products and services within the project organization? Is it A, true, or B, false? Again, procurement planning is the process of identifying which project needs can be best met by procuring products and services within the project organization. Is it A, true, or B, false? So we will be closing the poll po in five seconds. Five, four, three, two, and one. So sir, uh, most of our participants answered A, true. Um, Ms. Janelle, uh, congratulations sa sumagot ng True, ibig sabihin, kayo po yung tama. Yes, the correct answer po is true. That the procurement process, the procurement planning is the process of identifying which project needs can be best met by procuring products and services within the project organization. So the correct answer po is true. Congratulations. Nakikinig po talaga ang ating participants sa ating, maganda po kasi yung topic natin on procurement planning. <laughs> okay, and, po. I, I said quite a mouthful and a, uh, Talagang, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. We will continue po with the lecture. Thank you. Welcome back. So we will continue now. Now we move to procurement planning and budgeted linkage already. Now, all procurement shall be within the approved budget of the procuring entity and should be meticulously and judiciously planned by the PE or procuring entity. Lagi po natin tatandaan ito na katulad nga na sinabi ko kung kanina, simple and uh, yet, na experience nating lahat kung pupunta tayo ng inutusan tayo sa palengke para bumili eh at sinabi lang ni nanay o ni tatay na ito lang yung listahan yung bibilihin mo ha? hindi tayo basta-basta makakabili ng lalampas doon at kung wala tayong pera pambili noon parang din po yung idea no Kiko, sabi nga alam mo si nanay talaga si nanay pa naman napakaingat talaga o dapat yung sibuyas mo ganito lang kalaki o ganito lang kadami kasi kung mas marami diyan yung sibuyas may bibili eh lalampas yung pera uh, hindi ka makakabili ng ibang parte no so at bago niya sinulat yon nilista pa niya ay ilalam niya na yung mga ingredients na magpapasarap pa ng adobo. <laughs> so sa atin po sa gobyerno ganun din po yung idea eh, no. Tayo po ay gagastos lamang kung tayo ay may pera na available para doon. At ano po yung magsasabi kaya po na na, siste, na yung sistema na yon ay pinakita ko kanina kaya po tayo may budget officer just to know, na, to help us identify kung may talagang budget para doon 
at meron tayong local chief executive na nagsasabing ito yung mga dapat nating bilhin at na, uh, on top of everything. Ano? At tayo pong mga Bids and Awards Committee na, na nag-check na, ay teka, ito ba, ito ba ay in accordance with, with yung brand na gusto mong bilhin ay in accordance with the approved PPMP or APP? No? Sila, pa yung, sila po yung nag-check, no? Katulong po natin, no? Lucia, sabi po natin na, na sila nag-assess na lang. Pero na, yung meticulously and judiciously planning ay nasa kamay po natin mga end users. Ano? O sa tulong ng, mga, ng ating mga officials, nagkakadak po tayo ng mga planning sessions. That's, that's why we have to participate actively. No? Kasi po ang ni-expect po ng bata sa atin is yung pag nag-prepare po tayo ng ating project procurement management plan, meticulously and judiciously plan po yun. Meticulous, ibig sabihin, meticulous so po natin inyo sa isa kung talagang yun ang mga pangangailangan natin yun po ba talaga yung yung um yung ating yung mga items na, na kailangan natin para makapag-conduct ng training o para ma-reduce natin yung number of na days para makapag-release ng permit from 10 to 3 days lang judiciously big sabihin ba talaga bang um ginawa natin yung mga dapat we are expected to do like uh conduct of market study, feasibility study, o baka naman ng opyo lang tayo ng PPMP ng ibang ibang units, ano? Um, that's not in accordance with the rules and regulations, ano? So, um, judiciously planned by the procuring entity and meticulously planned. So, lahat ginagawa po natin yun. Kahit po yung part of being judicious is you make sure na yung mga, yung po bang mga prices na yun or costs are actually the, the, the prevailing prices. So, baka naman nag-TSL lang po tayo or tingin sa langit, ano ho? So, iniiwas po natin dyan. Make sure, tatandaan po, lahat po ng dapat ng procurement ay dapat na doon lang sa available na budget na meron po tayo at dapat yung ating annual procurement plan is meticulously and judiciously planned by the procuring entities. Isa pa po ay dapat consistent with government fiscal discipline measures. Kapag sinabi po natin fiscal discipline, eh, simply put, itong ibig sabihin lang is you spend within your means. No? Kung ang expect ang pera mo po ay sampung piso at you expect na... Um, Kasi ang sabi po ni local treasurer nung nagsimula po ang planning, oh, ang pera na na-carry over natin last year ay 10 piso at we expect to to uh, collect uh, 10 more 10 pesos this year. So ang pera po na po pwede natin, ang maximum na pwede natin gastos sa ating LGU is only 20 pesos for the year. Uh, just just for ano no, just just, just an example, a hypothetical example. So um just to stress the importance of uh, only spending within your means. So ibig sabihin there should be a balance between uh um, spending and the available revenues which should be used to, to fund the spending. Now, the APP shall include provisions for foreseeable emergencies based on historical records. Ang siya sabi po nito, kung tayo po ay uh, um, napunta sa isang lugar na lagi pong pagkadating ng halimbawa June or December ay laging binibisita ng mga bagyo, ay siguro naman po o na, napunta tayo sa mga low-lying areas. Ano ho? Uh, in expect na po pwede po tayong mag, mag anticipate ng mga pangangailangan natin during such times na pwedeng mataas ang chance na magkaroon ng calamity, local calamity. So bibili tayo for example ng mga pangka, ng mga boat, mga gasolina na nakalagay na doon na, na naka-schedule for that particular month. Those are foreseeable emergencies. That kahit emergency siya, based on historical records na alam mo na oh, usually ito yung bahaing one. So dapat po ginagawa natin yon. And we will only, any be, only be able to do that if we plan in advance. no? Kasi kung hindi tayo nagpa-plan in advance, eh hindi yun. Lagi, lagi nga po natin siya sabi, if you fail, if you plan to fail, you are, um, plan, if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. no? So importante po yun. <clears throat> Uh, you also have to consider that yun yung kailangan nating bilhin is crucial to the efficient discharge of government function. So, sabi kanina, pero po ng gobyerno to. So, kailangan kung gagasusin po natin ito, pero po ng taxpayer, sorry po, let me correct myself, pay taxpayers money po ito. So, ito po ay kung gagasusin natin, dapat po in accordance with the, uh, with the efficient discharge of government function. Kung tayo po, uh, nakalagay naman po kung ano yung mandato ng opisya na natin, ano yung mga dapat natin gawin as government officials or government employees. So, dapat po yun, kung bibili po tayo, yun po ay makakatulong sa atin para maisagawa kung ano yung mga mandato ng opisina natin. Hindi para sa mga personal gains 
or mga other activities that will serve our personal interest, but the, but the interest of our office or institution. Also, in pursuit of the principal mandate, oh, of course, that's already it. Principal mandate of the procuring entity, tayo po yun. Lagi pong tatandaan na lahat po ng, in accordance with Section 7.2, ano po yung part ng batas ng RA 9184 na nagsasabi, hindi ka dapat bumili ng bag ng, ng kung ano kung wala po yun sa approved um, annual procurement plan. Yun po yung section 7.2. No? It says na wala pong pwedeng mang, uh, pagbili na mangyari or no procurement can be undertaken unless nandudun siya sa annual approved annual procurement plan. At very strict po yan. No? Very strict. Yan po ay an absolute rule. Dapat po bago po tayo bumili, nandudun po yun sa annual an- Approved Annual Procurement Plan. Okay. Ang approved annual procurement plan po by, uh, is approved by the head of the procuring entity or his or her designated second rank official. No? And that is mandatory. Now, ano po yung uh, uh, timelines that we have to remember kung tayo po ay may mga procurement activities? Uh, uh, let me just, uh, to help you appreciate this timeline, let, let please uh, link this to the procurement paradigm that I showed you earlier. Remember that there is uh, there are four quadrants. The first two quadrants is for identification, and the second quadrant and I assessment is first and second. Union is the first row, and then um, it, this diagram is telling us that during procurement identification, uh, say whenever. Uh, please remember that we when we plan. Let me just go back to the idea that whenever we plan, we are planning for the. Uh, succeeding year. Ibig sabihin, kung meron tayong planning activities ngayon, 2023, the, 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 the coverage of that plan is for next year. If it's an annual investment, uh, I mean, if it's an operational plan, that will be for next year already. Hindi tayo nagka-plan for this year kasi it's already an oper- to This year is 2023. So ang planning natin dapat, dapat is for next year na. Now, using that logic, Ibig sabihin, uh, uh, kung, kung ngayon, January of March this year, dapat yung plan natin for 2023 ay nag-start na tayo mag-identify from January to March no, ng mga pangangailangan natin. Nailagay na natin yung sa mga documents that you see in the third row or on the third row no, that we should presented earlier. Now, come March of the current year, up to July of the current year, dapat meron na tayong consolidated ABP at meron na tayong approved indicative annual budget proposal. Now, let me, let me right now, I want you to please take a look at April, the April, the one in blue. No? So, sabi po dyan, uh, approval of indicative annual procurement plan. I already mentioned about an APP is the consolidated PPMP. Please remember that, uh, let me again, um, bring you back to the previous statement that normally ang budget call will start July of the current year. Ang ibig sabihin noon ay wala pa po tayong approved budget no? um, for, the, for, the, for the following year. Ang ibig sabihin, maaaring may plano lang tayo pero wala pa pong budget. Kaya po yung mga plano na yon by April is based on an indicative, is an indicative annual procurement plan, plan pa lamang. At kung lumabas man, man yung tiyatawag nating um, local expenditure program uh, ng ating local na pamahalaan, i-adjust natin yun, ano? yung ating indicative APP, no? yung ating PP, uh, PPMPs and indicative APP para magsuit po doon sa local expenditure program. Again, Yun ay local expenditure program pa lang. Hindi pa rin sigurado kung lahat ng plano doon ay ma- ma- ma-aaprobahan. At yun pa rin ay indicative. Pag sinabi po natin indicative, parang tentative pa rin po siya. Pero ang kagandahan po yun noon ay nakabase na po yun sa plano na, na pinaghandaan natin mula January to June of the current year para sa susunod na taon. No? But come January, most likely yung pong appropriation ordinance, ang nakikita nyo po dito ay GAA. That this presentation po kasi ay, ay tailor-fitted to national government agencies. But uh, in your case, since you are municipal LGUs, um, we would use, the, the, whenever you see the word GAA, uh, please uh, refer to appropriation ordinance. No? So the uh, uh, the uh, come January, yung appropriation ordinance will have been released. No? Assuming na na-release na yun, i- i- yung ating mga PPMPs and indicative APPs will be updated kasi maaaring nabawasan o nadagdagan yung ating indicative, yung ating mga items we purchase. No? So, kung wala naman, then okay, same amount. 
pero kung, kung mayroon kailangan bukuhin, then we have to do the necessary changes no? sa APP para po magsug doon sa annual, sa approved up, um, sa appropriation ordinance, sa budget na nakalagay sa appropriation ordinance. So yun po ang nasa huling row ay yung mga tao na, uh, and mga units in charge of conducting or doing the activities. Makikita natin for procurement identification ang pinaka-busy doon ay tayo yung mga end-user representatives and end-user units. No? Pagating naman po sa procurement assessment, ang mga busy doon ay back secretariat, the, head, the, the local chief executive being the whole, and of course, the back secretariat po ulit. Now, what you see on your screen is a lifted presentation um, adapted from the Budget Operations Manual for LGUs. No? Just to at least refresh you or um, give, uh, I mean, refresh your minds about how budgeting process is done in the local government units. You perhaps know this more than I do, but... Um, uh, based on this diagram, uh, the budget process starts with the LCE or local chief executive is issuing a budget call for sick of July. No, although these, um, let me just uh, declare uh, so this part of the, my disclaimer is that usually um, you, these uh, the, these schedules like July, um, they sometimes. Uh, Sometimes they're one week earlier or a week or weeks later, depending on the circumstances involved. No? So please just focus on the process. But usually you know more of these um, activities more than I do. But what's more important is that you know how the budget process is done and that there are um, timelines that you have to uh, be aware of. Now you will be provided by, of course, by your local chief executives and your budget officers. No? Now, when the LCEA issues a budget call, yung budget officer natin conducts sa budget forum to be able to tell those who are concerned, the stakeholders of the budget, the users of the budget, so ba yung mga policy directions, so budget direct, uh, policy directions ng lokal na pamahalaan. So nasasabi ito yung mga dapat nating budget ng ngayong taon. No? At pagkatapos po nun, ang mga department heads and um, uh, department heads will prepare and submit budget proposals July to August. Although ang sinasabi po dito ay department, this is the time that you prepare and submit budget proposals. Um, the assumption is from January to uh, to June, there has already been a, a preliminary conduct or, or preparatory activities in the preparation of budget proposals. So I have said, meron na kayo mga market studies na ginawa because as early as January naman, like I said, diba, it's just, uh, an annual, uh, our procurement plan is, is a... Uh, is uh, our APP is an operational version of um, our AIP. An AIP is a slice, an annual slice of the plan of a, a five-year strategic plan. Ibig sabihin, at the start of the year, most likely alam na natin kung ano yung mga activities. All not, everything that we need to do, or what's left for us to do, is to operationalize the plan. No? Now, um, July to August, our uh, sorry, Next is the local finance committee conducts a te te technical budget hearing. They'd like to check whether there is budget for the proposals that you submitted. No, Siyempre, mas madali-dali na yung activity ng, ng mga head department heads kasi meron ng mga prepared materials. Um, pwedeng tantalin, pwedeng mabawasan, pwedeng madagdagan, no? depending on how the, the top officials um, see a need. No? For to do in doing such. After that, the budget officer evaluates the budget proposal and then the, finally it concludes with the LCE submitting the executive budget to the Sangunian for, in, for, um, up for uh, authorization. Now, remember that in this particular diagram, the, uh, the, the preparation of indicative PPMPs happens when the department heads prepare and submit budget proposals while the indicative annual procurement then happens during this, this stages at, at the bottom of the screen. Now, this again, you you perhaps more know this more than I do, but I just showed you this because I'd like to, to emphasize that the, the activity, the planning activities usually are involved in, during the conduct of um, uh, the, the first two stages of local budget cycle, which is proposal and authorization. No? Now, this uh, the, the, this um, the, a slide shows you a procure, the uh, an illustration of how procurement planning is connected with the budget cycle, and I specifically added the uh, the the one that is implemented in the local government units. The one at the right is uh, is uh, generally implemented in national government agencies. The one at the left with the, with the LGU budget preparation authorization flowchart is, of course, applied in LGU. Now, uh, 
I just would like, what I would like you to understand is how are we going to harmonize these activities? No, I already showed you the NGA kanina, but I would like to stress that um, in the LGU, ang sinasabi po dito ang issuance ng budget call ay June 16. Pero sa national government agencies, ang issuance ng budget call ay um, January. But uh, in the LGUs, I already said that as early as January up to perhaps early weeks of June, dapat nag-prepare na tayo. Yun yung mga preparatory planning activities na ginawa natin na conduct na tayo ng market study. So that pagdating ng budget call at preparation of submission and submission of uh, budget proposals, na napaka-ikli, no? June 16 to July 15, all that you need to do is to polish your PPMPs and submit it by July 15. Ano po, kung gagawin natin yung mga preparatory activities na yun. And then, during, uh, if that will be done, man, mas madadalian po tayo. No? So, but during budget legislation, there is also a pro corresponding process where in the LCE submits the LEP or Local Expenditure Program, which we call Executive Budget, to the Sangunian. And um, that executive budget, when when reviewed and endorsed by the appropriation or committee on appropriation by the Sangudian and authorized by the Sangudian, then and later on uh, um, gains the approval or, or, or of the local chief executive, then that becomes the appropriation ordinance, which is the basis now of um, which is the basis of the preparation of final list of items to be procured in the annual procurement plans of each government or local government units. Now, ano po ba yung mga basic principles na naka, that, that, uh, involve, that are involved in conducting market study? Let me, let's start with identify, defining what really is a market study. Ito po ay ang proseso ng pag-gather at pag-analyze ng information about capabilities na, na nasa, nasa merkado, no? Kung ano po ba yung mag, na tutulong para masatisfy yung agency need. So dito very clear na po na ano ang pangangailangan ng agency. Agency may sariling mandato, provide uh, the list of services and then yun yung sasabi na yun yung mandato ko, i-provide yung services na to. Para magawa mo yun, kailangan mo ng ganitong mga resources. And para mabili ng agency o ng procuring entity yung resources na yun, then nagkakandak siya ng market study para makita niya, ay ito yung mga pwede kong pagkunan. Ito yung mga local suppliers, national suppliers na pwede mag-provide ng services na to or ng product na to sa halagang ganito. So that's basically the conduct of market study. It makes you more aware kung ano yung mga para makilala mo kung sino sila, saan sila nanggaling, at as well as the associated costs that you have to consider no? that will help you in preparing your procurement plan. The next question is how do you how does market study um, help in the development of a good procurement plan? Number one is please remember that uh, the market study starts with the, the, the with identifying the desired outcome. The desired outcome, as you can see in the previous, if you can remember the previous slide shows that uh, in the, the previous slide, it's agency need. For example, the, uh, the agency is expected to um, let's just take one particular um, service, no, to to process uh, the licenses and permits to uh, operate to be used uh, to sell and to be able to to um, to operate a store in the market, mga ganon. No, sila yung mga napaprocess in other words, mga market, mga just put it that way, nang para makapagtinda sila, makapagtinda sila sa palengke. Now, yung, yung processing, alam na, ay, ito yung, ito yung mandato namin. Dapat ma-improve namin yung pag-release nun. Dapat from 10 days, maging 2 days na lang. So, yung desired outcome mo is to make sure na yung pag-release ng permit mo is will be reduced um, by 7 days. So, from 10, magiging 3 days na lang siya. So, nang gagawin mo? Um, tingin ka ng, ano yung mga requirements mo? Siyempre, nagkanda ka na ng, ng, mga, ng option, I mean, nag, nag, nag uh, plano ka na ano yung mga options mo. And you selected procurement of, uh, particularly selected the procurement of uh, computers para, makanda, para maisagawa mo yung plano mong pag-reduce ng number of days ng processing. Sabi mo, uh, ah, alam mo na ngayon na kailangan mo ng computer. Therefore, it's time for you to know ano yung mga requirements. Ay, kailangan ganit mabilis yung processor kasi most likely everyday meron tayo. For example, this is part of, um, of analyzing the technical requirement. Kailangan ko mag-produce ng 
dati, makap- nakakapag-release kami ng 20 licenses a day. Gusto ko makapag-release tayo ng 50 licenses a day. For example lang po. No? Now, that particular um, requirement of your agency should be linked to your desire. So, ay, teka muna. Uh, kung ganun karami yun, kakayanin ko bang mag-release? Effect- affected kasi yung number of days. Eh. Na kay- kung ganun na karami yun, affected yung number of days mo. So, you want to make sure na kung ganun karami yung nag-request every day ng permit sa inyo, para ma-achieve mo yung te- reduction from 10 days to 3 days, abay kagawa ka ng, bibili ka ng computer na kaya, computer na kaya mag-automate ng functions, ng mga uh, processes nyo. Ng, na may proseso na mabilis, mag, mag, mag-print on a paper, on a color, whatever that is. So, you will ka- come up with, with a list of technical specifications that will allow you uh, to, to provide that service. So, iisa-isahin mo nyo yun. Ngayon, pag natapos mo na yung requirements, for example, ang processor mo, instead of dual core, gusto mo dapat quad core. Ang printer mo, alam mo na, since um, hindi dapat that matrix kasi ikaw pala ay multi-copy printer, so you need three, or you need four, or you need five, and dapat may scanner kasi alam mo, may mga requirements ka na, may meron akong clients na gusto nila scan, mga ganon. So nakaisa-isa po lahat yun. Now, you conduct the, uh, the, the, the market study. After you have all the requirements, you look at the market. No? Sino bang kaya mag-provide? May kaya bang mag-provide locally? Analyze your market dito. O baka naman kailangan sa Manila pa. Ay, teka muna. Kung, kay, kung sa Manila pa, ang ABC ko will have to be increased by, uh, since ang free charge will be 3,000. So, kung uh, ang aking ABC ngayon ay... Um, 50,000 o 53,000 na. So, mas magiging ano ka, mas magiging uh, end up. Kung sa Manila kung magagaling, uh, ano yung associated cost? Baka maaari may associated cost pa. No? So, idadagdag din natin yun. So, mas magiging maganda yung plano mo. Mas responsive sa pangangailangan mo. Mas maiiwas mo yung failure feeling just because wala mo pa-participate. Now, that will arrive or that will help you come up with a very good procurement plan. Market study. Now, ad- 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 advantages of, of of doing market study is that you know it helps, it, it improves time and it, it promotes time and cost efficiency. No time and cost efficiency, because since available na sa yung mga data, and uh, you don't need to adjust make adjustments later on. No, then maachi mo yan. Improves competition since nagkanda ka ng market study, you know na there is more than one, there are more than one competitors to join. Transparency. You become, uh, you, the public is, is better aware na meron kayong procurement activity that you talk to everybody, you talk, not, to, not only to a specific um, uh, bidder, prospective bidder. Equal opportunities for or and it avoids conflict of interest. So these are the advantages of conducting market study. Now, as I have said, market study, feasibility study, and other um, let's say technical uh, natin, documents that you gather during uh, your market study, other documents could serve, uh, serve as a supporting document to your project procurement management plan that includes um, SOW, uh, detailed engineering designs, if you are proposing to conduct intra projects. Ano po. Now, ano naman po ba na ang ating PPMP? Ito po yung isang document na nakikita, eh, pwede i-download sa GPP website, no? kailangan pare-pareho po tayo na ginagamit, no? hindi po pwede mag-deviate. No? This document guides um, the procurement and contact implementation process as well as the vital refer- as, as uh, serving as a vital reference and procurement monitoring. Let's number one procurement contract implementation process. Kung sinabi natin yan, na yan will be the, the 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 service or contract will be I mean the product will be acquired through um, competitive bidding. Then there will be a contract. No, um, say gaano katagal nakalagay din po sa terms of reference. Na yung vital reference of procurement monitor, yung pag sinabi natin, adapt kailangan po siya ng June. So nakalagay na yung plano to procure that item ng June. No reference po yun. At makikita natin by the end of the year, maa-assess natin kung, teka muna, ako nagplano na bibili kami ng ganitong item. O, papatayo kami ng hospital uh, or clinic sa aming LGU. Nagkawa ko ba siya ng June? Napunta siya ng December. So, it helps us evaluate whether we were able to do what we planned at the end of the year. No? What we planned at the start of the year, whether we were able to do them during the, I mean, during the specific month month or, or months that which we plan to do them or not. 
or baka na-delay. No? So PPMP or Project Procurement Management, that is very effective um, in allowing us, tayo mga LGUs, to be flexible in optimizing the utilization of the scarce, scarce resources that we have. Ibig sabihin, hindi, hindi naman po kasi unlimited yung resources natin. Ano ho? So kung nakaplano na lahat, nakikita na natin kung ay may natitira pa akong budget, so, ito bibiliin ko na lang ganito. Ay, pero um, sobra na pala to, bawasan ko na lang. So, nakikita natin in one by looking at uh, the, the entire procurement plan kung ano lang kung kung tayo ba ay uh, is able to use the available uh, money allotted for for us no or hindi no it minimizes the practice of doing shortcuts kasi yung shortcuts like ay ah, kailangan ko dito uh, alam mo yun natin tempo lang bumili dahil nakita mo yung kabilang office bumili ka sa shopping wala naman pala sa PBMP mo when everything is planned you don't have to guess you don't have to say um, gusto ko ng ganito because at the start of the year napagplano nga na po natin yun so hindi tayo basta-basta na lang gumagawa ng isang bagay na wala po sa plano Ang gumagawa po ng PPMP, syempre yung ating mga end-user units. No? So, required po tayong lahat na gumawa ng PPMP. Kaya po natatanong, sino may responsibilidad na gumawa ng ating PPMP? Yung po yung mga end-user units. No? During the budget preparation to support the cost estimates in the budget proposal. So, ibig sabihin lang po, uh, katulad na sinabi kanina, we spend within our means. Kung alon yung budget ceiling na binigay sa atin, dapat hindi po tayo lalabas doon. Tayo rin po mga end users are responsible in the preparation of all documents sa katulad sinabi ko kanil, supporting documents, um, purchase, including purchase requests, uh, that, uh, including but are not limited to technical and specifications, scope of work, and terms of reference. Tayo rin po yung gumagawa noon. So kaya, uh, and we will only be able to do that if we have the, 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 the basis or to, to back up our claims na ito talaga yung kailangan natin, ito talaga yung price, ito talaga yung mga technical specifications. no So tayo po ang mga end users, lahat po tayo actually, mapaboss man tayo ng ibang, I mean, lahat po ng offices are end users. no Nagkataon lang na, uh, but an end user can also be a back secretary, can also be the back chair, the back members, but all of us, since we represent different offices, we are working in different offices, those different offices are end users. No? Kasi lahat po tayo may pinapabili sa gobyerno at yung magamit mo. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, PPMP is also the basis for contracting arrange, um, contracting arrangement, no? I mean, the basis for identifying the contracting arrangement kasi nakalagay naman po dyan kung siya po ay competitive bidding, kung siya po ay shopping, kung siya po ay negotiated procurement, you know, the different procurement methods, no? So, um, type of objective, type and objective of, of whatever you want to procure, the extent and size, the procurement methods, the time schedule, and the estimated budget. Doon po natin inalagay ito sa PPMP. No, may example po tayong mapakita ngayon. Ito po yung format ng Project Procurement Management Plan na pwedeng i-download sa, sa website ng GPPD. No, madali lang pong um, i-download yun. Just go to www.gppd.gov.ph slash downloadables.php pwede nyo pong i-download ito. No? Pare-pareho po tayo ginagamit. Ano ho? So again, if you if you didn't get that, nandiyan dyan po sa screen ninyo ang um, ating um, website ng GPPB. Along with other downloadables like APP, APP, CSE template, pwede po natin i-download sa website ng GPPB. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an example of a uh, completely filled out um, sa, uh, PPMP. No? Lahat tayo nagpaprepare nyo. No? As you can see, may general description kung ano yung gusto natin ipapili. May quantity and size na nagsasabing um, ilan ang kailangan natin. For example, kung packs yan, 60 packs. Uh, to, um, kung tokens, 200 tokens. No? Copies, 150 copies. No? Um, magkano yung budget natin for that? Ano yung mode of procurement na kailangan natin? Kung competitive bidding ba or negotiated procurement? O end, kailan natin siya planong bilihan. Yung mga nakakolored na yellow, ang plano na agency is to conduct uh, the procurement during those months. Say for example, October, uh, during May ba, or during January. Remember that these are these are important because this could be the base also of the Business Awards Committee to conduct your um, to conduct the different procurement, activi uh, procurement activities. Now, going back to identifying the need, there are uh, of of the agency, you no, know, based on its mandate. 
it is the 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 the, uh, the core functions of the end users unit in the organization. No? You identify. I mean, identifying the need is the core function of the end user. So tayo ang nakakaalam ko ano kailangan ng ating opisina. Tayo ang nakakaalam kasi kung ano po talaga yung mandato ng office natin. Kaya tayo po ang kung may tinatanong po ano ba yung pangangailangan ng office mo? Dapat alam po natin yon. At paano po natin malalaman kahit bago po tayo, kung tayo po ay bagong elect lang o bagong hire. Alam natin na, ah, you can look at the historical data. May dating APP, may dating PPMPs. Pwede rin po natin tingnan yon May mga data before na, na nagsasabi na, um, not just PPMP and APP, na ay, teka, ito, ito yung months na laging may baha. Ito yung months na laging may bagyo. No? So ito ay ito, ito yung mga pwede kong bilhin during those times. And uh, another basis of identifying kung ano ba talaga ang need ng ating ahensya is looking at the, the purpose, the goals, and the major final outputs ano po, ng ating ahensya. Dahil ang gobyerno naman po, like I said, nakaplano na po yung lapat natin go, yung mga PPAs natin at lahat ang ating PPAs or project programs and activities ay naka-align, na, naka-align po sa major final outputs ng ating, in, in, in ating ahensya. No? So, Um, we just have to look at the our goals, MFOs, and propose other projects that will allow the agency um realize those, those MFOs. No, pwede pong maging basis talaga natin yon. Another one would be for national government agencies, like I said, pwede tina yung strategic plan. The strategic plan is similar to um comprehensive development plans, mga LGUs, na or CDPs. No, now uh, ang coverage po nito ay three uh five to to six years. No, ibig sabihin uh yan ay mahaba yung plano na yan. So, every year, let's say, 2023, 24, 25, 26, 27, up to 28, 23 to 28 na plano. Now, kung ngayon ay 2023, you can be assured na si CDP meron ng plano for 2024. Konting changes na lang yung mangyayari if there is a planning a revision that needs to be done. Pero ang kagandahan, no, nakaplano na yung five years. Kaya, it's very important na alam natin yun kasi doon natin ikakarga yung mga gusto natin gawin o bilihin or Uh, projects that we would like to undertake kasi normally kung yun ay naka-align sa strategic plan sa investment plan ng ahensya natin most likely it will get the um, budget support that it, that it needs now you also have to look at the current supply inventory na hindi tayong mga end users hindi na tayo tumitingin kung ano po ang gusto natin uh, kung yung dami na gusto natin ay bibilalagay natin yeah. natin mga ahensya po talaga na may mga sariling kanya-kanyang or may kanya-kanyang sariling depo or mga uh, or inventory. Ang ibig sabihin nun eh, baka kailangan mo ng, ng 20 na gusto mo according to your need, kailangan mo ng 20 units ng ng computers pero meron pa palang available doon sa sa ating inventory. Kung, kung hindi man yan computer units so steel cabinets for example, Alam, baka meron pa nakatagong steel cabinets doon na po pwede mo nalang i-gamitin or punin. Ano? So, tingnan din natin, baka meron pang available sa inventory para hindi na tayo yung um, ma- ma-reduce na natin. Makita natin na ang kailangan ko na lang palang bilhin, uh, since kailangan ko ng 20, meron pang available na 5 steel cabinets, ay 50 na lang. So, yung need ko na ilalagay nyo, na ilalagay nyo doon sa PPMP, ay 50 na lang. Instead of 20, dahil yung lima, ay kukunin nyo na lang po doon sa, lim- doon sa inyong um, depo, doon sa inyong kumbaga kung saan kayo nagtatago ng inventories office, no? And of course, yung other maintenance and operating um, needs. Kumbaga, kung may mga activities bigla, may mga activities si mayor or ibang offices where you have to be involved in at sa palagay nyo, ikakailangan nyo yung mga items na na, na yun para may carry out yung MOO, yung, yung activity na yun, then pwede po natin iligay yun as part of the need, no? Which will be included in the PPMT. Ang tanong, no? Magkano po ba ang ilalagay natin <laughs> na cost nung, nung ating gusto bilihin? Yun po ay makikita sa approved budget for the contract. No? The ABC reflected in the APP and the PPMT shall consist with the appropriation for appropriations for the project authorized in the appropriation ordinance as the case may be. No? So since you are LGU, so appropriation ordinance po ang sabihin natin. So in other words, yung ABC po dapat nakatali po siya doon, hindi po lalampas doon, kahit siyo lang naman yung allocation para sa inyo, then make sure na yung budget po allotted for that project na naka, nakatali sa inyo ay nakatali din or in accordance with, with what is the available plan as shown in the appropriations 
ordinance. No? Now, sa mga kaso o pagkakataon naman po na kung kayo ay binayayaan ng isang proyekto that will run for more than a year, may say, max uh, three years, for example, meron kayong three years na automatic um, na meron kayong uh, binigyan kayo ng multi-year contracting authority ng LGU. No? Kaya ibig sabihin, meron kayong, for, uh, say, 10, 10 million every year. Uh, nakakasigurado ka na 3 years, meron kang 10 million. Ibig sabihin, 30 million ang, ang, ang multi-year contracting authority mo. Pupwede rin naman po yun. Ang siya, sabi ng RA9184, dapat naka, nakalabas, naka-reflect po yun sa ating ATP. No? So, um, the ABC shall be the... Ano ba yung lalabas na ABC kung tayo ay multi... Meron pong project na magra-run for more than a year. No? So, sabi dyan... Eh, yung ABC na ilalagay natin sa APB shall be the project cost reflected in the multi-year uh, um, obligational authority or the equivalent document. So kung nakalagay doon ay 30 million, ang ilalagay natin doon ABC sa ating APB ay 30 million. Now for the say, for year 2023 up to 2025, meron kang 10 million. So 30 million ang ilalagay mo sa APB mo for 2023. Pero nakalagay doon sa remarks ng, PPMP, ng APB na um, you will you will only use 10 million for 2023 and then and another for 2024 ilalagay mo na sa APP mo na you will only, only use 10 million for 2024 so ganun po sa pagkakataon naman kung kayo ay binayaan ng project na foreign funded ibig sabihin uh, yung pondo ay manggagaling sa mga foreign agencies like Asian Development Bank no o ADB or uh, World Bank uh, mga funded projects ang ABC po it refers to the amount that uh, or the cost of the estimate na, na prepared by the tayo na pinipare natin na inapprove nung nung uh, ahensya ng ADB or nung ng World Bank para gawin po or yung international financing institution nilang po sila para gawin yung proyekto na gusto nilang supportahan so yun po yung cost or ABC na dapat lalabas doon sa ating APP now how do we prepare the project procurement management plan? Please remember that this diagram po ay, ay nasa konteksto na nagpe-prepare po kayo ng isang procurement plan na during budget preparation and budget call. Ang ibig sabihin po nito, wala pa pong, hindi po based on the appropriation ordinance, but based on, during the time that there is a budget preparation and there is a budget call. No po? Now, ibig sabihin from January to June. No? Now, ano ang ginagawa natin? Sabi ko na kanina, as early as January, nagpe-prepare na po tayo ng plan. No? February, March, April, meron tayo mga, nagkakandak na tayo ng market study, na feasibility study. No? And we, 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 we already start preparing our PPMPs, tayo mga end users. And then our budget officer will help consolid, uh, will help check kung ano yung possible of kung alin kung may budget ba doon no kung may budget now and then after that yung back, that the, those PPMPs will be forwarded to the back secretary for consolidation para ma, makapag-prepare ng indicative annual procurement plan no and then during the time the bids and awards committee will also identify kung anong procurement modality ang gagamitin para mabili yung gusto niyong bilhin yan ba ay bibilihin sa pamamagitan ng paggamit ng competitive bidding or pwede or shopping, negotiated uh, uh, procurement um, under shopping or whatever modality of you based on RNA 184. And finally, there is a need for our indicative ATP to be approved by the head of the procuring entity or oversight body for approval. So like, you know, sa atin po ay local chief executive. Please remember na ang diagram ng po ito, again, ay nasa konteksto pa lamang na ang ating basis ay pwede pong ang local, uh, local expenditure program. Kaya po meron po tayo, ang tawag natin sa kanya ay indicative ATP. Ibig sabihin ng indicative, hindi pa po sigurado based on our own plans pa lang. No? Based on the estimates, uh, na binigay ng ating ba, ng local chief executives and budget officer na, na pag-usapan na po yun, no? So, mamaya pa po yung kung approve na ang appropriation ordinance. Now, kung tayo po, maibalik ko lang dito, sinasabi niyan, okay, how we prepare the PPMP. Sa PPMP, may mga budget tayong ilalagay doon na, na ABC no? para doon sa project. Paano tayo maglalagay ng cost? Kung hindi naman natin alam, kung ano ang ibibigay sa atin ng na sa, sa uh, through appropriation ordinance 
no? Of course, an ABC is not just based on, on the cost. We prepare the ABC because we conducted the market study. <laughs> diba? The market study will tell us magkano ba yung kailangan mo para, remember, yun ay para may carry out mo yung projects, activities, and programs mo. Kaya mo yung ginagawa. Kaya most likely, you, that is, um, there's a good chance that it will be given funding. Mas lalo na kung yun ay naka-align sa uh, um, uh, PPAs ng national government. no? So, pag-conduct natin ng market study, makikita natin kung magkano siya, kung ano available items sa market. no? And market study also allows us to to um, forecast the possible inflation na pwedeng mangyari kasi syempre next year pa yun. Maaari pa magbago yung price. no? If we expect that the, the, the prices of goods will increase by 3%, then it is just uh, but proper that we will also uh, augment the, the ABC by 3% just to be able to cover the possible change in the cost of goods which will we will uh, purchase next year. No? Yun yung mga parts, yan yun yung mga important um, things that we have to remember that we will benefit from if we will do the market study. It should be related to the procurement timetable and... Yes, it should be related to the procurement timetable. In other words, uh, kapag uh, sinabi natin na uh, we expect to procure the items in December, uh, in June, um, alam natin na uh, and alam natin na uh, ang prices ng goods by June will go up, then we'll anticipate the, the those things. No? So, uh, it must consider those post components, uh, associated components, if that will be procured in June of next year. So, uh, um, hindi lang yung cost of acquiring it or yung price niya, kundi the associated cost. Please remember that. Now, I'll, I will turn you over again to our um, GPPB associate to do the knowledge check. Please participate. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, sir. So at this point, we will be having our second knowledge check. So you may participate by answering via the Zoom polling feature. Also, our Facebook Live viewers may also type in their answer at the comments section. So the question is, who must consider the different cost components in determining ABC? A, TWG, B, back secretariat, C, end user, or D, all of the above. Again, who must consider the different cost components in determining ABC? Is it A, TWG, B, back secretariat, C, end user, or D, all of the above? May I remind also our participants, if you have any questions, you may uh, drop your questions at the Zoom chat box or at the Facebook live comment section. We will entertain po all your questions by the end of the lecture, and we will also only entertain those related to the topic for today. So I will be closing po the poll question in five, four, three, two, and one. So, Sir Venson, uh, most of our participants, 60% of our participants answered end user. Is that the correct answer, Bo? Um, Thank you, Ms. Janelle. Our dear participants, uh, you remember that uh, the end, the, the one uh, it, to make sure that the technical requirements are are accurate and the prices are the cost or the estimated costs are accurate are the one preparing the project procurement management plans, no? And who prepare the project procurement management plans? It's the end users. So the correct answer is letter C. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations both to those who got our uh, answer, which is end user, and to those who haven't, uh, please remember na lang po yung ating uh, answer for this question. Ayun. So we will continue po with our lecture. Back to you, sir. Welcome back.
back. <laughs> Thank you for staying. Now, um, before I before I continue with uh, my presentation about cost project costing, I'd like to go back, uh, step back a little bit because I believe I, 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 uh, I inadvertently skipped this part. No, hindi sila sa I was looking for this. I was, um, I was waiting for this slide, but I, I, I couldn't remember that I showed you this slide. But uh, um, I, upon going back, I remember there is this slide that uh, I have to show you really. Now, <clears throat> this slide shows you that we will guide all government offices no, in um, dealing with, in how, in implementing good procurement practice. No? How do we really manage our procurement activities the better way? No? Um, this diagram shows you a, a, a uh, a drawing uh, prepared by or inspired by Sinek in 2009. Uh, he, I think the title of his article from which uh, this particular diagram was adapted from is Start With Why, How Great Leaders Inspire Everyone to Take Action. Um, in terms of uh, applied, procure, applied to procurement, so I will not go to this, uh, those what, how and why. Applied to procurement. The What this, this tell us is that there are many government agencies. Of course, tayo yung lahat, sabi nga nila, the biggest, uh, the, tayo yung pinaka malaking buyer <laughs> sa buong Pilipinas. Pero yung tayo yung pinaka malaki kung iisipin natin. Pero hindi lahat ng government agencies perform this in the same way in, in doing procurement activities. Merong magaling, meron namang always delayed, meron din namang uh, mabilis, pero pagdating sa huli hindi pala tama yung ginawa no hindi pala hindi pa rin maganda ang finalo na procedure that turned out to be uh, a deviation from the existing rules no so no in evaluate my problems hindi pa rin effective ang procurement management nila ang sinasabi ng diagram ito kasi marami kaya nagkakaroon ng uh, the reason why that happens is, is that there are many procurement entities um, leaders, organizations who think that the best way to get what the agency wants is by first identifying what they want. No, they, they, they then they uh, select the methods or the, the methods on how and the craft strategies on how to get what they want, and later on, um, just uh, try to put together ideas why are they actually doing it no that's from outside inwards to the core no nakita na nila na ay parang nakakita sila for example nakakita sila ng magandang computer sa labas i think gusto ko niyan kasi parang computer uh, pwede niyang i-automate yung service ko or bibili ko yan paano ko yan bibiliin ah meron parang available uh, since ako to since Ako naman ang bibili. For example lang po ito, hypothetical. Kung kayo official, hmm, total may budget naman. Yan, yan na lang ipabili ko. Tapos, um, nung, tinong, nung tinong ka ng supervisor mo, yung mas mataas pa sa'yo, bakit kailangan mo yan, uh, Mr. President? I mean, uh, Mr. Uh, Direct, sabi mo na, yan, nung ka ng President. Sabi naman ng President. Tapos, ang isip ka, sinabi mo kay President, I think makakatulong yan para, para ma, ano, para ma-improve yung service ko sa office. No? Uh, oh, okay, baliktad, anong nangyari ngayon? So you start with what, and then inisip mo kung paano mo siya makukuha, and then saka ka nag-isip kung bakit mo nga ba siya ginagawa. According to Sinek, uh, as applied to many other most successful organizations like Apple and other successful organizations which have been in the market or existing in the market, thriving in the business industry, industry for so long, the common uh, common among these um, industries or businesses is that mo the, their leaders think uh, of sulu I mean, look at things differently. The way they think, the way they act, the way they communicate. Usually, they, they start from the core outside. Ang ibig sabihin, before they do something, they are guided by the the why question but not the what no iniisip nila bago niyo gawin yon um ang iisipin mo muna ay dapat bakit ko nga ba ginagawa to bakit ko kailangan gawin yung mga bagay-bagay no if we will follow the same uh, logic 
tayong mga procuring entities should, should, should what we will be doing is that before we procure anything we should first ask ourselves ano nga ba ba yung mandato natin ano nga ba yung outcomes na kailangan natin i-achieve ano ba yung performance na kailangan natin gawin no ito yung aking mandato gagawin ko to kasi kasi gusto ko mapa-improve yung ma, ma, ma increase yung yung appreciation ng client ko mas maging satisfied sila mas mapabilis yung pag-process ng documents. Ah, okay, dahil yun talaga yung mandato ko eh. Paano ko gagawin yun? Ah, ang gagawin ko is mag-a-analyze muna ako ni pwede akong mag-hire ng bagong tao para magawa ko yung objective of, of, of speeding up uh, processing yung transactions or, ex- or bubili ako ng item ng computers. Nag- an- nag-cost benefit analysis ka, analysis ka, nakita mo mas better kung bibili ka ng equipment. Now, Nung nakita mo na bibili ka ng equipment, saka ka nag-isip, anong class-classing equipment yung bibiliin ko? Ang sabi po ni Snek, ganun po dapat ang ating mindset. Nagsa-start tayo, kung ano, inaalam natin kung ano talaga yung ating mandato, ano yung dapat natin ginagawa, bakit natin ginagawa yun, saka tayo nag-iisip kung paano yung mga, na mga proseso, steps, procedures, including um, conformance with rules like and policies and laws like RA 184 to be able to get what we really want what we really ano, what, what we really need to do to to, to be able to to um, satisfy uh, or to be able to carry out our man- mandate no so yun po yung siya sabi ng golden circle lagi nating muna titingnan kung bakit natin ba ginagawa ano ba yung mandato natin bago natin isipin kung ano yung bibiliin natin para nakalingkod lahat ng ating kailangan o gagawin bibilihin sa kung ano lang talaga ang kailangan nating ahensya or agency golden circle salamat po now let me get, let me go back to project costing, costing no before this i think we we ended up with the preparation of abc no now um the excuse me project costing sa sabi natin ano yung costing ulit ano yung abc ah, it's the cost it involves cost so, so we move to costing ano nga pa paano nga po ba tayo naglalagay ng cost nag estimate ng cost project costing is the practice of forecasting ibig sabihin ng forecasting we think in advance we predict the cost of completing a project with a defined scope so sinabi mo kanina let me let me again go back to my example where we plan to put up a, an LGU hospital so iniisip natin kung magkano yung gagastusin natin, uh, magkaka- gaano kalaki yung project at ka- gaano kahaba at kailan natin siya kailangan. So magkano yung associated cost uh, to be able to do that or carry out that uh, project. It is a summation of individual cost elements using established methods and valid data to estimate the future cost of project contract based on what is known today. No? So like I said, it's it's not the cost. There are many costs associated with doing a project. So, dapat in anticipate natin yung in advance. No, we predict quantities, cost, and price of resources required by the scope of an asset investment option activity or the project. The cost estimate is determined by using experience. Is determined by using experience and experience and calculating and forecasting the future cost of resources, methods, and management within a scheduled time. Napaka-importante po nito in deciding whether to take on a project. Makikita ba natin na, teka, based on estimated cost, parang hindi available yung pondo ko. Baka dapat uh, sa susunod na talong or, or i-reduce ko yung cost kasi baka hindi kakayanin kung ganito kalaki yung requirements. No? Um... Yung scope niya ba sobrang laki o kailangan i-adjust? Makikita natin yun based on available cost. Established project cost baseline, ito bang gusto natin malaman yung total cost ng project? Ano yung ABC ko, cost baseline? Na po pwedeng maaring tumaas or maaring bumaba based on cost drivers. And it helped ensure the project remains financially feasible and 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 help avoid helps avoid cost overruns. Ibig sabihin, uh, you you would be when you do cost estimation, it helps you uh, work within the budget available. Na maaabot yung pagkakataon na nandudun ka na sa project, na realize mo na may mga additional um, requirements ka, na kailangan pondohan at ang pera mo ay kulang na. Okay. Now, going back to the diagram on on um, 
the Philippine Procurement Party, matanong, when are cost estimates being prepared? Kailan ba natin piniprepare yun dito? Okay? Yes. In the count of three, two, one. The answer is during identification of um, identification uh, phase. No? So, where we conduct cost-benefit analysis, visibility study, market study, and PPMP. Tama po kayo. Na, syempre, paan, di ba nilalagay natin yung cost sa PPMP? No? And that, that cost is based on our market study, FS, and cost-benefit analysis. Uh, well, FS and market study. No? And we also use that cost in performing cost-benefit analysis. So, during that time. When are the cost uh, estimates being prepared? As early as budget preparation po, nagpe-prepare na po tayo no? through the issuance of budget call. No? Government agencies are required to prepare cost estimates for its procurement activities for the succeeding year. Ibig sabihin yung susunod na taon. Kaya nilalagay po natin ito sa PPMP. Kaya sinabi ko kanina, as early as June, as early as January, meron na tayong preparatory activities, no? budget preparation activities para kapag nag-issue ng budget call, konting enhancement or tweaking na lang ang gagawin natin. Or konting pagbabago na lang, makakapag-submit tayo ng mas maaga at on time. Yung mga project procurement management plans natin o ng, ng mga offices natin are required to support budget proposal of government agencies. Ano ba yung mga tools and project costing in the determination of approved budgets for the contract? Marami, medyo may apat po tayong ipipresent. Pa, paano nga po ba tayo nag-determine ng project cost? May iba't iba pong paraan, depende po kung ano yung project na gusto nating gawin no? or gusto nating bilihin. No? Um, pwede pong procurement ng building, pwede namang computers, pwede rin namang pong development ng program or software, pwede rin consulting services. So, um, the, the way, I mean, there are many ways of coming up with cost. No? That includes analogous cost uh, estimating, which is identified as, um, also as the, the, the top bottom approach, no? Analog, analogous estimating. Ito set out mo natin. Uh, it's quite easy, pero ang ginagawa po, why quite easy, find quite easy by sometimes, this is because this is also based on historical cost, no? Ang ginagawa po dito, this is mostly practiced by people who have experience in in estimating cost of a particular project because they had an experience na of doing the same project in the past no in other words kung halimbawa mo ikaw yung magkapatayo ng small hospital no or LG hospital most likely uh, it, you will find it easy to estimate yung cost kung ikaw ay meron ng dating um project related to uh, i mean na similar to that, no? nakapagpatayo ko na rin ng Barangay Health Clinic or LG Hospital in another municipality. So, analogous estimating. Um, Bottom-up approach is another one which is more of analytical. Ang ginagawa naman po dito is, in a, um, I will give the examples later on in, in the succeeding slides. Bottom-up is, you start with uh, the small... Uh, uh, computing the cost of smaller components of the project, and then you work your way up. You add all of the costs together to come up with the, um, the total cost of the project. So, ang sabi natin, kung ang project is composed of several work breakdowns, no? work breakdown structure, or WBS, work breakdown structure, we, um, we, we compute the cost of each work, uh, work structure, my individual work structure, then we put, we had all the cost of all those work work structures or substructure, sub work structure to come up with, uh, with the total cost of the project. Parametric estimating, on the other hand, um, takes into consideration uh, the different parameters no, in, in estimating the cost. Kung baga meron kang criteria in, 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 in um, measuring or or anticipating or estimating the cost of the project. Again, may example later. And then finally, yung life cycle costing, um, which takes in consideration the cost associated with acquiring the project from acquisition to disposal. Kumbaga, this is disposal of the, the, the item which you will purchase. This is similar to yung yung na cradle, cradle to break. Uh, grave uh, approach cost costing. Now, among these three, uh, oh, sorry, among these four, the the most um, effective, uh, according to to uh, studies, is the bottom up or analytical analytical estimating because it provides more. It is more flexible. Um, 
is it is more easy to use. No, now talking about life cycle costing, I have I think I've mentioned this earlier that life cycle costing understands or tells us that the acquisition cost of whatever we want to purchase, kung baga magkano yung price, price niya, is just, a, is just the tip of the iceberg. Naalala niyo yung iceberg na Titanic na nagpalubog sa buong Titanic. Ano? Now, tip of the iceberg, meaning, yun lang yung nakikita natin cost minsan kasi yun ang problem, hindi natin na-anticipate yung ibang cost associated with acquiring that service or product. Now, there are other costs involved in acquiring or acquiring that product that co- that includes operating costs, maintenance costs, and disposal costs. Say for example, one one usual example I give, no, is when you when you have when you plan to prepare a print. Well, no, when you plan to purchase a printer, and you are made to to select between um, a bubble jet printer and a multi copy printer. Uh, and then you have you're made to ask to to compare the benefit to do cost benefit analysis you what you will do is that you will compare yung cost ng na acquisition and then you will also compare the cost of maintaining it like kung bibili ka ng bubble jet bibili ka ng bibili ka ng cartridge you no know, ng ink for that um bibili ka rin, or, or kumpara mo yan sa cost ng bibili ka ng ink para sa multi-copy printer, saan ang mas mahal na acquisition, saan ang mas mahal na ink, kasi mas maintenance cost yun. Kapag nagpaayos ka, saan ang mas pura, no? saan ang mas mahal sa dalawa, saan ang, uh, in terms of need, saan yung talaga doon yung pinakakailangan mo. No? In terms of electric, electric consumption, alins na dalawa ang, pina, ang mas, uh, mas nakakapag, you know, you know nakakapag consume ng electricity. In terms of disposing it, which one will is most likely to be highly disposable and it will not adversely affect the environment or can be sold at the end of the useful life. No? So, magkano yung cost? So, there are many costs associated with um, with, with, the, with the acquisition of an item or goods. Although we don't, do not necessarily in, include all of this in an ABC, but it an analyzing these different costs allow us to include them in the PPMP. Now, when the the need when the need to to um, incur such cost arise, then we we are in a better position to to act uh, response. I mean, act on a timely fashion that we don't need. Uh, we no longer have to to wait for the to the revision of the PPMP para lang natin ma magawa yon. Kasi na anticipate natin na ay bibili ko to monthly. Kasi hindi lang naman yung acquisition ko. Kasi kailangan ko na bumili ng monthly ink. Kasi normally, nauubos yung ink niya. So, you, you see, acquisition cost. There are, there are many costs involved in in acquiring or procuring an item. Hindi lang yung iisa. So, whenever we look at the cost, and we would like to see yung overall benefit ng acquiring that item, sa ating institution, we have to look at it from different um, from from different perspective, in so far as cost is concerned, no, and in so far as cost um, items are concerned, kasi baka over the year, baka makita natin teka hindi pala sustainable, hindi pala natin kaya kasi gasos gasos po pala, no. Now uh, let me sh- share with you some of the my personal the, the examples that I personally prepared um, that refer to this. I will will just breeze through them, no. Now. Analogous estimation, for example, how do we apply it? I said earlier that this is normally uh, used by experts who have previous experience um, doing similar projects. Let's say I will you uh, say we want to put up uh, an LG hospital, and then we would like to purchase a medical and dental equipment. You no, know, the following listed items in the first column. So we, there is quantity. Now, if we will use the analogous estimation, what we will do is say. We will look at the previous years where we purchase the same item. If we're purchasing this, this year, we are most likely to adapt the prices um, that which we, we used in the previous year. Yun lang yung v- very simple, para analogous estimation based on historical data, no calculations or software needed. It's quite easy and analogous. Although, may, may mga disadvantages din siya, which I will show you later on. Next would be... Um, Parametric estimation. This is also an example. Example, do you have, there is a project team in a local government hospital that is asked to estimate a construction cost for a new hospital building. Yung, P, yung procuring enti- entity, which is the LGU, has completed similar projects over the last couple of years. 
Yung LGU na yun uses an in-house database to granularly track the activity duration, activity durations, and costs of previous projects. Nalaman doon sa sa, sa database na ginagamit ng LGU na yung similar project in the past cost a 200 uh, per cost 200 per square meter, no? And yung proposed new project for 2024 next year uh, is how has a total area of 3,000 square meters. So if you are to estimate kung magkano ang cost ng, ng hospital na yon, yung hospital building for 2024, we can say na, ah, based using parametric estimate estimation, 6,000, I say sorry, 6 million ang sasabihin natin cost nun. That, but that's quite easy way of using parametric estimation, but still you made some Umaga computation involved. No? Now, another uh, example of parametric estimation is the use of what I call um, param parameters. Parameters are similar to criteria. For example, we already have the hospital for um, argue, uh, for uh, for purposes of, um, of exemplifying or to give you a, a concrete example. Let's say we already have a, an LG hospital and you'd like this time around to purchase a patient information system. Kung baga, yun yung, host, yung, yung software or program that will monitor um, patient uh, admission, discharge, uh, you know, yung mga ganong bagay sa hospital. No? Pero, um, pa para makabilo nun, al nagtanong tayo doon sa local IT natin or consultant na IT, ano pa yung kailangan na mga projects doon? Magkano ba yung cost noon? So, ang ginawa ng IT, sabi niya, ay, meron pong yung cost noon will be based on the different um, cost um, drivers. Yung cost drivers na yun, if you add them together, sila yung nagdadagdag ng sabi na ito yung cost nito, ito yung cost nito. Ano yung mga cost drivers ng isang software? Very, very, um, for example, uh, applicable to uh, the, the, the development of a software. Meron siyang installation cost, may customization cost, may establishment of interfaces, may testing, hindi ko pa sinama yung training dyan, ano po? and so on and so forth. Let's say these are the available parts ng project. So yung parameter involved noon is um, ang cost ng installation is fixed normally kasi install lang siya. Ang cost ng customization Siyempre, gusto mo yung customize sa barangay kagandahan or LGU, municipality of kagandahan, um, located in in Kabukiran, uh, Philippines. no Let's say those are the names of municipalities. Ang parameter ng customize, ang ibig sabihin ng customizing is gusto mo talaga naka-tailor fit sa pangalan sa sarili mong uh, municipality, yung mga yung features ng software. So ang parameter doon ay customized sa iyo. No? Number of different product line services or, or services the client produces. So based ang, ang sabi nito, kung magkocustomize ka, aanalamin mo yung mga services that my, my local hospital provides. Kung halimbawa, this, in this example, there are 12 product lines or service na binibigay niya na unique. Ang ibig sabihin, gagawan ng ikakapi yun o i-adapt yun ng system. Ang bawat cost ng, ng product line yan is to, according to prevailing market prices is 12,000 pesos. At, at kaya ang gawin within 5 days. Therefore, to, to compute customization, um, that will be 12,000 times 5 times 15 product lines that gives us 180,000 pesos, which will be uh, finished in 75 days. Ang installation, its cost, it's fixed to 25,000. Finally, for example, testing. Ang testing is the cost of customizing plus the cost of interfaces. Meron din ganong mga parameters. So as you can see, you, you, you need to multiply. There are parameters involved to be able to arrive at estimated cost and duration. And here, you can see that the total cost when you add them together is 389,000 pesos for you to put a patient information system for Kagandahan Patient Information or, or, or LGU Hospital, Barangay or Municipality of Kagandahan Patient Information System. No? Ganun po yun. Now, let's move forward to bottom-up estimation. Bottom-up estimation, I said that usually the cost is, is based on the work packages or work breakdown structure, WBS na tiyatawag natin. The aggregate cost of the bottom of the specific work packages or work breakdown na nakikita niyo sa baba will be added to come up with a project estimate. No? This is quite similar to the one to, to parametric without the, the parameters. No? Iba naman ito. Uh, ang example, uh, you uh, you want to develop uh, you want to uh, 
you want that the ELG hospital to have a hospital patient information system. Ito yung bago pa lang yung, wala pa kayo, for example, na IT, na patient information system. So, sabi ng IT ninyo, ah, kailangan po yan ng, ang, ang cost niyan involves my project management, my requirements management, my development and integration, my testing, and going live. And then yung project management, my activities involving planning, my activities involving controlling, my activities involving reporting. Yung po mga planning, controlling, and reporting up to deployment na nasa dulo are all work breakdown structure na may kanya-kanyang costs. No? At, at may kanya-kanyang activities. For example, planning includes planning schedule, planning resources, planning budget. Controlling involves activities such as controlling schedule, controlling budget. May mga associated cost din po yun. No? Now, yung bottom-up estimation, work on package or activity level, and dito sa activity level estimation ng cost on. What, they, what, what, what happens is that, uh, for example, planning schedule, planning resources, and planning budget that you see here, um, ilang tao ang gagawa, gaano katagal, at magkano yung cost. I, I'm sorry about the dollar sign. Assuming it's a peso sign. No? And then, minimultiply lang that you get, get the cost. The, the cost rate per Monday. Now, um, you do that for the rest of the, the work breakdown activities or functions, and then you, you add all the uh, costs associated with every work break, breakdown structure, and then you come up with a total estimate for the whole project. As you can see, it's more detailed. It's bot bottom-up estimation. This is why um, it's quite flexible because you can see um, what happens if you adjust one cost, what will be its, in its impact in the entire cost of the project. So this one is, um, the uh, according to researchers, is the, the one that is most popular and is more flexible, eh, which is more popular to many project management development officers. The last and final uh, example of, of costing is the life cycle costing. Ang ginamit natin isang polito is, for example, is bibili kayo ng, uh, ng uh, hospital vehicle naman. So medyo kinonsistent ko na lang po example sa inyo. Pag kayo po ay bumili ng hospital vehicle, ang, uh, mag, nang nag kayo ay nag-conduct ng market study, nalaman ninyo mayroong dalawa. May Nissan Pulsar STS model and then may Nissan Leaf na model. And you compared both. In terms of um, the different cost um, factors from acquisition to disposal. And sabi doon sa ating napag, napag-aralan, for example, uh, na, na, na costs involved from, from cradle to grave na approach na ang vehicle, pag binili mo, may, pra, may, may purchase cost, may on-road cost, may stamp duty or mga taxes. Kapag binispose mo, may major repairs, may resale value. Now, what you did is you identify the different costs for two different options or marami pa kayong options na mga sasakyan and inad mo yun together. Which one provides you the best offer? No? So, but again, what, what is this telling you? There are many costs associated with um, with uh, uh, teka lang po. Let me just um, plug my Ayan. Okay. Thank you po. Very low. Okay. So nakita niyo po marami pong cost involved. Pagbili niya lang may price siya, purchase cost yun. Pag-refuel po na may additional cost, so nako-compare po kung alin ang mas advantages para sa inyo or para sa institution. So if we will look at the cost this way, makikita natin mas, mas ma-anticipate natin yung kailangan nating budget para mabili or mag magamitin para lang sa isang item na bibilihin natin. Now, these are the these are the different uh, strengths, weaknesses, and applications of the different um uh examples of uh, cost estimation techniques no um nakikita po natin diyan that the most popular is the bottom up approach because it's easily audited it's most sensitive to labor rates and it tracks vendor quotes and of course sabi niya mas marami na pong gumagamit na for a very long time or the only weakness is that nakikita niyo since there are many items to be um computed medyo cumbersome siya and slow and laborious and it's very useful in production estimating development of the software as well as negotiations the rest are other um of course i uh uh, presented to you for your personal consumptions. But you know, uh, what I really would like to tell you is that hindi naman talagang lahat ito kailangan gamitin natin. Some of you might want to use a combination. Hindi naman ito titignan sa, sa procurement um, ng RA9184. But you know, 
doing this allows you to be more uh, responsive of, of uh, to be more proactive, to be more accurate with your estimates. Um, to, allows you to avoid future problems that kung saan in a current cost overruns. No? So if you do this, most likely your procurement, this will promote good procurement practice. Now, another problem that was, another challenge to procurement is the when when government agencies or procuring entities, particularly end users, do not follow, do not know how to write technical specification. Now, why is it important, the technical specification? No? Um, after cost, syempre yung cost, depende rin siya kung ano yung mga technical requirements na meron tayo. Because technical specification states the need to be satisfied. No? Um, ano ba yung need mo? Baka naman yung need mo lang is, uh, sinasabi mo, kailangan mo lang, uh, I mean, sinasabi mo, you need to digitize mga documents ng mabilis, pero ang binili mo lang ay yung flatbed scanner ang kailangan mo pala. Yung palang scanner na kaya mag-print, mag-scan ng at, uh, 50 documents per per minute. no Yung po pwedeng ganun, sa mata, at so ang binili mo ay flatbed scanner lang that it could not be able to perform that. So, hindi nag-match ngayon. There's a mismatch between what you purchase and what you really need. So, yung technical specification should be able to tell to 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 say something about to, to to capture what you really need. Sinabi mo kailangan mo mag-scan na you because you want to support the digitization digitization effort of the government. Um gusto mong ma-digitize ma- ma- lahat ng mga documents. No? Kaso lang ang binili mo ay flatbed. Eh kaya niya mag-scan na eh, iisa lang per 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 minute. Hindi, hindi mo na yung hindi mo nagawa yung hindi mo na mali kasi yung technical specification mo. I remember a colleague no, nagpabili siya ng table microphone, for conference microphone, isang set. Nabili na. Pagbili, pagdating ang giant table mic, kumpleto. Tama ang procurement procedure. Alam niyo po ang kulang, kulang siya. Hindi gumana. Bakit kasi merong pa isang equipment na kinakailangan bilhin para gagana yon together with a, a speaker na malaki. Kung hindi yan siya, siya na dapat nakakonect. Eh, eh, the, the total the set does not include the speaker. So, ang tagal na hindi nagamit yung table microphone just because hindi nakita yung, yung specification na there is a need for a speaker for it to fully run. No? The technical specification defines what you wish to buy. Ano ba talaga yung gusto mo? It defines your expectations. What do you really need? Do you expect that your computers to... to um, to, to uh, scan multiple documents, um, colored, you know, things like that. It, it establishes a standard directly, which directly affects the quality and the performance of uh, the performance of, of the output no? or your output. No? So, nakadepende po yan sa technical specification. So, kung may problema po tayo sa, sa natanggap natin, baka po tingnan po natin ulit, baka sa technical specification na binigay ng end user, hindi po magandang pagkakagawa. No? At makakatulong lang na ma-improve yung technical specification if you need, if you conducted a needed um, uh, needs analysis no, can, um, where you identified the needs of your offices, functions, performance, you gather data through market study, um, feasibility study, and you collated the, 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 the gather data like the, yung siya sabi ng mga brochures, yung mga prices, na, yung mga, mga, di ba, yung mga, may mga brochures sila, kinokonsolidate you know, date natin yon and there are the basis of the prices to be indicated in the terms of reference and then we draft the specifications based on the gathered the, the consolidated uh, information which you gathered from the market no we compile them together uh this information together and we translate into the re- it into the requirements that meet out meet our need no so ganun po yung buong process of developing the specifications so we have to f- make sure that we do this now, pa, saan po ba tayo kumukuha ng mga technical specification? Madali lang naman po kung pwede naman po kayo. Ito yung mga choices. Pwede po kayong mag-check ng mga previous records ng procurement activities kasi maaari naman po meron kayong mga dati ng biniling ganon. Mga ibang offices, may mga technical specifications sila. Ang bawing, equipment, ganon. Meron silang biniling ganon. So, maaari nyo i-adapt yun. But be careful kapag technology po yung ating binibili. Kasi karamihan, ang technology na kailangan nila is fit for the purpose. Ibig sabihin, yun yung kailangan nila. Kung meron kayong public and media information office, most likely, they will procure computers and, and uh, technology na suit sa needs nila. Ibig sabihin, high-end yun. Kasi they develop video documentations. E tayo, hindi naman. Maaring printing and sending emails lang. So, be, be careful. no. Um, you have to consider it. Pwede rin po kayong additional um, source of specs would be you request from the suppliers. no. 
um, na pwede ipadala sa inyo. Then, pwede rin naman mag-request kayo sa other government agencies na meron relevant government agencies na pwede mag-provide nun. You can request for a consultants na halimbawa medyo technical yung project at wala kayong alam on how to prepare or limited yung knowledge on how to prepare the technical specification then hire a consultant. Pwede rin mga professional technical associations like if you are infrastructure project yung inyong gustong i-pursue kaso lang wala kayong engineers then go to mga uh, so seek the help of professional um, engineer engineer uh, mga, uh, professional associations of engineers mga ganun no technical journals makikita po natin sa mga na pwede na, na, na subscribe tayo pwede namang e-journals din no and of course pinakahuli po natin yung internet kasi we'd like to stress na although there are so many things that you can mm. obtain from the internet hindi po lahat yung reliable no the next thing that you need to do if you were able to get a copy of a price list from the internet from a particular source is to validate it by calling the, the, the contractor, supplier, or the consultant. Tama pa po ba yung price ninyo? Tama po ba itong item na to? Available pa po ba? So don't just copy it from there without uh, proper or follow-up validation. Uh, a specific, um, all specifications to be effective should be clear, should be consist, uh, should be clear. Ibig sabihin, um, you state what you really want. If you say that you need a printer with the following uh, uh, functions, a scanning function, a printer that is connected to the fax, environmental interface, no, a uh, printer that can print in colored ink, no. So it has to be clear, hindi ambiguous language, consistent with what you really need, no, consistent with the purpose for which it was, it's it, it is to be purchased, no. Kung gusto mong gamitin yun, uh, to um, a computer to scan documents and scan documents na para makapag-digitize ng 100 pages of documents in, in one minute, then dapat consistent yung bibilihin mo sa purpose. Complete, ibig sabihin, may technical specification ka, may, meron kang um, uh, complete ng technical specification mo na nagmamatch doon sa pangangailangan mo. Kasi you can, if dumating nga sa inyo, yung inyong gustong bilihin, tapos may hinahanap ka na wala doon na kasama, pero yung pala, wala naman doon sa original technical specification mo. So you cannot look for that like what I told you earlier. Nagpabili ng conference microphone without a speaker, Kung naghahanap ka na, na siya ng speaker, teka lang, when you look at the technical specification, wala makalagay na speaker doon. So, it should be complete. Next is competitive. Kung tayo po ay kukuha ng technical specification, we do not as pa. Let, let's make sure na even if pinuha natin siya sa isang agency, sa isang agency, sa isang, in, sa isang business, we will not, um, kung baga, tailor fit the requirements to them. We will prepare our own technical specifications. It will just serve as a guide. Kasi pwede pong mag... That's against the rules, no? Kailangan, we should strive to improve competition, not to reduce competition or to restrict the competition away from restricting it. Dapat, dapat as much as possible, kaya nga natin sinasabi, you know, you, you, you come up with specification that, that, that follows, that, that, that specifies the functionality and the performance instead of specifying, specifying the design requirements to make it more competitive. And finally, to be concise, like stating your your technical spe- uh, statement of facts, the technical specification in your only ones, and when you repeat it, make sure that it's still consistent with the previous specification requirements para hindi nagbabago-bago. But as much as possible, the statement of facts for, for, for specifications should only be stated once para hindi po, madali po siyang maintindihan. And when the technical working group reviews the um, compliance of the items awarded to you with the technical specifications you prepared, napakadali na po sa kanila to say na, ah, it suits our requirements or it does not suit the requirements. So it, they will, the, the inspectorate committee will not accept it because it was, simply did not meet the requirements na pinipare natin end users. I already made mention that um, the technical specification could be is uh, for ha, have three types. No, there are there, there are what you call functional requirements, performance this requirements. Uh, sorry, functional specifications, performance specifications, and design specification. Functional specification refers to uh, our 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 technical our, our specifications that focus on the functionality of the item. It describes the function of the item. For example, you want to purchase a pen. So if you are to use a functional specification is that a pen that is able to write in ink um, uh, 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 you know, on a piece of paper. No? 
for 1.5 kilometers, no? Uh, continue uh, in 1.5 kilometers. Uh, if you want to say add mo ng performance requirement using the same example, uh, pen which can write in a piece of paper uh, with um, continuously uh, for 1.5 in one uh, for 1.5 kilometers. So yung continuously is an addition is a performance criterion that is added to the statement. So functional and performance design is. Uh, okay, uh, red, uh, the size is 4 inches or it's, it's color, uh, the ink is black. You know, the, the design specification. But please remember that reference to branding in accordance with is, 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 is a violation of Section 18 of RA 9184. So we cannot specify the brand. They're not allowed to specify the brand. Okay. When we prepare for the specifications for goods, um, please um, know that we prefer the performance and functional specifications over um, design specifications. Although we, it's design specifications like specifying color, yung, yung, yung color, yung dimensions, yung weight, yung size. No? Uh, it's design specifications say. Uh, Pwedeng ilagay din yun, pero priority is, should be given to performance and functional specifications because it promotes competition. If we are purchasing services naman, like for example, security services, janitorial services, we make sure that our technical specifications include na yung description ng services na kailangan natin, kung gaano katagal yung kontrata na kailangan natin sila. Um, saan, saan sila maa-assign? Gaano katagal? Of course, yung duration ng contract. Ano yung kanilang official um, reporting time? Kung tayo may problema at kailangan natin silang maka yung, yung agency makausap, kailan, gaano kabilis yung response time? Yung procedures and responsibilities for contracting supervision. At saka yung key, what do we expect uh, the, the, uh, the, the services to be or performance indicators to be you know? um, for, before we accept the uh, performed service? So, lahat po ito dapat nakalagay sa, as part of the technical specification when we want to acquire or purchase services like janitorial services and security services, example. Makailangan very clear po yun. Now, in terms of infrastructure projects naman po, for them to be, um, for them to be clear, no? Um, for them to be shovel ready, na siya sabi ko ngayon, pag nakalagay na po tayo sa PPMP ng ating mga infra projects, when you write technical specifications, although you do not include all of this in the PPMP, but the, it should serve as a, the, the, the parts of the tech, the, the terms of reference, a scope of work, or in any documents attached to the PPMP, they should be there as attachments. And po, na, of course, uh, hindi naman tayo na, hindi naman tayo, found uh, in full kapag ka hindi nakatouch. Kaso lang, alam niyo po yung, yung purpose talaga ng planning is you prepare not only be, to be able to write what you really want, but also to gather data that you need to, to, to make, to, to improve the procurement of that item. Ibig sabihin, para mabili mo siya, kung kailan siya, uh, to improve the readiness to procure those items also. Because without the supporting documents and basis, hindi rin natin mabibili yun kahit nakalagay po sa plano kaagad. So in terms of um, preparing technical requirements for infrastructure project, ito po yung mga tinitingnan natin. Specifications for all materials. Kung gusto natin, ISO, it, it follows specific ISO standards. We have to specify it. Detailed drawings. No? Required standards for workmanship. Special requirements as to the machinery to be used in executing the works or ambient conditions. Soil conditions of the site. Defining available site facilities. Terms of installation, commissioning, and hand over before the work is considered complete. And any requirements for environmental management system certification like ISO 14001 or equivalent. No? So these are the, 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 the just the sample um. Uh, requirements that we make sure parts of the technical requirements or uh, specifications that we prepare for uh, for procurements of infrastructure projects. In terms of procuring in consulting services, naman iba na naman po yung ating mga set of uh, very important parts of the technical requirements. We look for background. Make sure that your uh, terms of reference has the background. Um, make sure that your TO has the objectives, scope of work, the training, the time schedule and reports, services and facilities, and services and facilities provided by the 
employer. So lahat po ito itinitin ng doon. Now, when we write tech, uh, specification, um, hindi ina-assume na alam natin lahat. Excuse me. Siyempre, hindi naman po tayo yung mga technical people sometimes, most of the time, to, to write it. So, para po, we make sure na yun yung mga pinakito na natin are, are available, are accurately written in our DOR or our scope of work and detailed engineering requirements. Then, we... we, we if we do not have the expertise or, or exposure in doing it, then we have other options like consulting stakeholders. Pwede rin po tayo mag-engage o ng services ng mga technical experts, pwede sa labas or consultants. And, and um, we can set clear specifications mismo, like uh, dapat clear at hindi po malabo. No? Natatandaan po natin yung, as I said earlier, wala pong brand names, bawal na bawal updated where technology is taken into account. Kapag ka po kasi technology, alam natin, it changes every six months or even four months. Kaya ay paano yun? Yung plan natin is uh, for next year. Maaaring talagang the model is no longer available, the technology, there is a better technology available. So what will happen if you are purchasing a technology and then what you did is you copied a technical specification na available during this year, baka phased out na next year. That's why it will be more, um, it will be better if you specify the requirements. Kasi your requirements you will not change. But there, the technology will change. Your requirements you will not. No? And, and this technology will be able to upgrade itself Pero yung requirements niyo, siyempre, it will be the same. Yun po yung sinasabi natin, kapag naglagay ka ng technical, technical requirements, you're already tied up with that, those technical requirements, yung design specification, I should say, na nakatali ka na ron. Unlike yung sabi mo lang na yung mga performance specifications, you are assured na whatever design specifications they provide you for as long as yung performance and tech, and, and um, performance specifications mo are, are, will be satisfied, then yung technology, uh, masasatisfy ka, um, masasatisfy yung intention mo to acquire the service or a product, no? And fits the actual requirements of the PM or end users, of course. Um, this is, these are the, some of the strategies on writing technical specification. Make sure na you are very specific and detailed as possible. Meron nga mga sa very should be very specific. Para kapag nag-review yung technical working group natin, kahit na yung back, kaya nilang isabihin na yung specification na yun does not, ng, ng, ng bidder, ay does not conform with the minimum requirements that we set. No? So kung kasi kung malabo, hindi nila yung basta-basta makukompare. No? State the requirements of FAC Holy One. I already said that. Explain the intent and purpose of every item. Kaya siya sabi natin, oh, performance specification is way better than design specification. No? Functional specification, I should say, uh, functional and performance specifications are better than uh, design specs. Of course, pero pwede ka pa rin gamit yung design specification. Be as flexible as possible without compromising objective. And flexibility can be achieved whenever you focus on writing um, functional and performance specification. Kasi ang mangyayari nun, since halimbawa, uh, a pen that is able to write, you know, pero ang design specification kasi po pwedeng Pwede namang alam mo yun, it will be tied up na ang sabi mo yun, makapagsulat eh. Hindi naman pinakailangang uh, critical pala yung color. Pero sinabi mo, uh, blue, red, uh, ganun. Pero lahat naman ng pens na yun nakakapagsulat. No? So, eh, well, it's just an example. But normally kasi ang design specification restricts competition. Uh, yung flexibility mo is at stake kapag you're becoming very, very specific. No? So flexibility in terms of writing technical specification will be um, will be better. Specify what you need, not how to get what you need. Ang ibig sabihin nito, ayun nga, uh, how do you specify what you need? Kailangan mo ng ballpen na kaya magsulat ng dire-diretso na hindi na po putol-putol. That's what you need. Pero yung, yung to get what you need, kailangan biliin sa ganito. Dapat hindi galing sa China. Iniiwasan natin yun. Dapat galing sa US. Iniiwasan natin yun. Dapat ang brand ay Mac. Iniiwasan natin yun. Hindi ganun. It's not what you need. Gusto ko siyang biliin na gamit ang negotiated procurement 
by a small value, it's not your concern. No? Although you can only suggest, pero it's it's the bank's decision to put the modality. Look to increase competition, not to reduce it, as I have said earlier. As I have said, one of the main concerns, no, when we define the um, when we define the procurement, is that we make sure that the procurement will end up. I mean, the procurement will allow us to to obtain the value for our money, and the value for our money can only be obtained if uh, we are able to get the combination of of um, cost, quality, and sustainability uh, in meeting customer requirements. And sustainability cuts across the areas. Alam natin merong uh, economic benefits, merong social benefits, and merong environmental uh, benefits. Now, ang sinasabi ng, ng GPPB, tayo po sa gobyerno, you know, for us to attain sustainability, we also have to consider the impact, the negative impact of what we will purchase sa ating environment. For example, we are purchasing cleaners, record books, toilet paper, trash bags, and other air conditioned units. Um, remember that there is also yung, yung ating, yung life cycle costing. There are associated costs in buying any of this. For example, imagine the cost that all of these items, if you provide, uh, if you, we purchase materials that are harmful to the environment. No? So they they will contribute to global. Paano yun? Pwede ba siya sunugin? Pagkasunog yan, plastic yan, made of plastic, it will contribute to global warming. No? Ang alam natin, lately, napaka-familiar natin at minakatakutan na natin si Odet and many other environmental catastrophes that, were, are, are, that are linked to, to global warming. And our way of, of helping save the, our environment, reduce environmental, uh, greenhouse gas emission of greenhouse gases and you know global warming is to make sure that we also purchase items that are um, environment friendly kaya ito po nakikita yung mga priority list na CSEs na yan kahit yung ating mga DBMPS already have them so we prioritize what this slide is particularly telling you these prioritize items that are environment friendly to attain sustainability okay now i already said i already said about technical specifications. Well, the next question is, where do we write them? Meron ka namang, kasi may mga offices na, oh, this is what I need. Ginawa nila. Nag-gather sila ng data. Ginawa nila mga brochures. Ito yung gusto ko. Hindi po yun yung paraan. Tam paraan ang pagbili. Sa pag tayo po ay nasa gobyerno, meron po tayong gobyerno, meron po tayong official document na ginagamit para mag-request na bilhin yun. Yun po ay tiyatawag natin purchase request. Doon po natin siya nilalagay. No? Yun po ay... Uh, hinihingi natin sa ating, sa ating procurement office and I agree na pwede na namang i-download pero alam ko pang bawat office, offices ang bawat office ay meron namang may mga kanya-kanyang mga PR na similar din naman ng content sa ating since mga government offices tayo pero iba-iba lang sa mga titles naman. pero will you make sure that you whenever you purchase a uh, request for purchase of item dapat you can you use no you can it no you use the the, the accurate the appropriate document official document and whenever you uh, whenever you, you write uh, you and please remember that uh, dapat hindi kayo bago kayo mag magsulat o mag request ng item using purchase request dapat meron kayong approved app ppnp item no approved app kasi ang saya sabi nga hindi tayo pwede bumili ng items without an approved app So for our third knowledge check, may we ask our technical team to please flash the question. The question is, technical specifications must be prepare, prepared after posting or advertisement. If specifications are not properly prepared, it will be almost impossible to complete the bidding documents and award the contract. Is it true or false? Again, technical specifications must be prepared after posting or advertisement. If specifications are not properly prepared, it will be almost impossible to complete the bidding process and award the contract. So is it A, true or B, false?
our Facebook Live viewers may also uh, type in their answer in the Facebook comment section. So I will be close, closing our poll in 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And so, Thank Mr. you. Bench? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Uh, eighty percent of our participant answered false. Tama po ba ito? Tama po. Dahil po ang technical specifications, alam natin before po ay ginagawa or ipiyatapos po natin before po tayo mag-advertise. No? Otherwise, magkakaroon po tayo na problema later on. Hindi po talaga yun ang magiging outcome. Hindi magiging successful yung ating bidding process. There will be questions later on. So thank you, Ma'am Janelle, and congratulations to those who answered it correctly. Thank you. Thank you. We will now continue with our lecture. With annual procurement plan, after finishing with project procurement management plan, uh, we remember that uh, the Busy Awards Committee is the one uh, through the back secretary is the one consolidating the uh, different PPMP to come up with an annual procurement plan. Now, ano nga po ba ang annual procurement plan? It is the entirety of the procurement activity that will be undertaken by the procuring entity within the calendar year using the prescribed format. Ibig sabihin, lahat po ng gusto natin bilihan sa buong taon, nakalagay po yun dito. At tandaan po natin yung sinasabi po kanina, Section 7 of RA 9184, no procurement shall be done without an approved annual procurement plan. And that all of the contents of annual procurement plan is meticulously and judiciously planned by the, 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 the procuring entities. No? Now, no procurement shall be undertaken without or unless it is in accordance with the approved APP. This is the example of the Celepo uh, my, my thumbnail or picture ng APP format. I'll show you an example later on. But please remember that an APP should, shall be approved uh, by the head of the procuring entity or our um, chief executive officer, or sorry, local uh, uh, executive officer, eh, no? yung ating mayor, <laughs> local chief executive, LCE. It shall be consolidated by the BAC. The BAC shall take into consideration factors such as one-year planning perspective, emergency or contingency fund, and the schedule of activities. So, naka, dapat alam po ng mga BAC natin na yun ay one-year lang at saka alam nila na yung mga posibleng mangyari katulad ng mga emergency situations. And alam din nila kung kailan talaga dapat kailangan ng mga activities kasi nakalagay naman sa PPMP na o ito yung mga activity na kailangan namin gawin. Kaya dapat alam nila na kung kailan po isi-schedule din talaga yung procurement ng items na yon. The APP should be maintained and updated regularly uh, within six months. no? Alam po natin, every six months or more often, pwede din po talaga tayo mag-update. Pero we provide, syempre, since we submitted a copy of an approved, the, the, the GPPBT, so a copy of our approved APP, whenever we update, the corresponding changes should also be um, communicated or submitted to the GPPB accordingly. Now, how do we prepare the annual procurement plan? Our agencies have different units and divisions. Each division is preparing its own annual procurement plan. And uh, of course, the, the different end units are the ones preparing this. Now, these uh, annual uh, PPMPs, I'm sorry, each division is preparing each P, uh, its PPMP. Now, each each PPMP is consolidated by the back set. They check for procurement methods, and then the back will recommend the specific procurement methods. No, nagagamitin kasi syempre, they consolidate specific similar items together, and then the back recommends the approval um, of the annual procurement plan by the local chief executive. Now, you ha I have a similar presentation a while ago about this, but this time around, uh, that one. Uh, was in the context of uh, budget preparation and budget call. This time around is uh, an annual procurement plan that is based on appropriation ordinance. Ibig sabihin, the appropriation ordinance is already final or na-release na, na. If you have an, 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 for you to have an annual procurement plan, which is the basis of all procurement, 
dapat meron muna ang appropriation ordinance na release At kung meron na tayong na-release na appropriation ordinance, what comes next should be the budget officer should check no and call and review the in, uh, the indicative PPMPs kung may kailangan baguhin may kailangang tanggalin kung may kailangang idagdag based on the appropriation ordinance released after the budget officer may review yung mga yung mga PPMPs based on the appropriation ordinance it will be the, the end user will be notified by the budget officer of the changes they will find the end user will finalize the PPMPs and once finalized yung mga PPMPs na yun will be forwarded to the BAC and the and the BAC secretary will again um consolidate the PPMPs to and uh, the the BAC will again recommend the approval of the APP no the, the consolidate the BAC secretariat consolidates the PPMP to to come up with an APP and the BAC will um, review again the BAC, the, the APP if it conforms with with the uh, appropriation ordinance and 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 many other requirements and then check again the the request recommend the the modality and uh, recommend the modality if it wants a new modality if, if there is a need to and uh, finally when it's finished and and finally reviewed it will again be recommended to the hope or the local chief executive for approval so yun po is based on appropriate approved appropriation ordinance the next question is how did the, does the back sec one of the challenging task of uh it is bestowed upon the back sec the back secretariat that is consolidating the PPMPs into APP. Medyo, ito po yung pinaka-challenge. I, I was a back secretary for quite some time and this is one of the most challenging kasi minsan alam nyo po, kalimitan, iba-iba, for example, yung goal, yung, yung sign, yung, yung, yung uh, isang item, yung clicker, data clicker, ang tawag ng iba dyan ay data presenter. Yung iba naman, clicker lang. Iba naman ay... Um, remote control clicker. So, pero they are all referring to the same one. Yung, yung the one that we use yung, yung to control the movement on mouse, ano, or to, to move to the next slide. So, digital presenter um, or, or data presenter are more accurate. No? For example, but not everybody knows it's a, da it's a data presenter. So, ginagamit na yung pangalan. So, it's one of the challenges of the box secretary to determine what does the end user really need. So, this the, it, it, the, that's why it's very important that you have a procedure to, to inform the users what are the items, how, what are their names, what are their prices. No? Now, in consolidating PPMP there, piece, there has to be a way, there has to be a, a, a um, uh, similar, um, what do you call this, uniform procedure. No? What we do is we should sort by the, the items based on the type of procurement. Ibig sabihin na una natin, nasa taas ng APP ay goods. No? Ang pangalawa ay infrastructure project at ang pinakahula ay consulting services. Then, you check um, I, for, for items which can be merged. For example, pagsasama-samahin yung IT equipment, design and build projects, and together, lahat ng design and build projects makakasama, office furniture and equipment makakasama, and then, yung total cost na yun yung magiging APC. Kaya siya sabi ni Bako, umabot ka na ng, ng threshold, lumampas ka na dapat uh, competitive bidding na kahit ang kalagay kay PPMP ay negotiated procurement under small value. Pero sasabihin ni Bako, since napak lumaki na yung project dahil dinosolidate na siya, it, may, it will now be competitive bidding. No? Next would be uh, Usually, you, you separate um, common use supplies and equipment from non-common use supplies and equipment. No, common use supplies are also separated because these are the items which are um, obtained, uh, called from the APP and are in encoded or are transferred to the APP CSE, which in turn is submitted to the DBMPS. I will have a separate slide for that. And then you have to identify kung anong mode or modality ang, yeah, ang gagamitin na doon, which is the back, which is performed by the back. Yun ba ay magiging negotiator procurement under shopping or small value or competitive bidding. And finally, nakalagay doon yung, yung sources of funds kung yan ba ay uh, government of the Philippines or or um, or whatever source uh, of income have you. This is an example of, uh, this is a screenshot of the annual procurement plan that shows you the different columns, no? which are also labeled. Uh, column 1 uh, follows the UWAX code or the for the PAPs or Programs, Activities, and um, Projects. No? Nakalagayan sa number 1. And uh, column 2, uh, 
is, is should contain the list of procurement projects and pro, uh, and programs. Column three, yung syempre yung code kan uh, sorry. Yung PAPs, you wax ang basis natin diyan. Alam natin, alam na alam niyo ng mga uh, ng mga accounting uh, office office natin, ano, staff. So you wax code ang ginagamit natin diyan. So yung column 2 yun yung mga titles ng mga projects. Yung column 3, kung sino yung end user. Please remember na may mga pagkakataon na may mga consolidate projects. Kapag more than one, uh, pag consolidated yun, syempre maraming uh, office units ang gumagamit nun. So yung number ng end users or PA, sa MPMO or end users might might be more than one. So i-enumerate natin yan sa PMO or end users. Co um, column 4 uh, is supposed to contain whether the item will be procured uh, by an early procurement or not. no? So, medyo nawala dito. EPA or not. Pero, ando doon sa next slide. Column 5 will determine, um, based on the box determination, ano ba yung mode of procurement na gagamitin to purchase that. Um, column 6 is a schedule of each stage of procurement activity, whether kung kailan ba siya, uh, syempre advertisement, anong buwan, submission, anong anong month or anong date, no? notice of award, and then contract signing. The source of funds, yan by government of the Philippines or income, and then um, estimated budget for the project, no? kung ABC natin, and the brief description of program, project, or activity na nando dun sa column 9. Again, this uh, this can be downloaded from the GPTB website. This is an actual example of the ATP. No? Sample lang po ito. That you can, uh, it, it's quite small for some of you, especially uh, those who are already, um, you know, uh, for some of you. But uh, let me just, um, uh, you, you, you can always screenshot it, but it, it has the same components which, which are described in the previous slides. No? So, uh, example, uh, let me just read once. Uh, for, for, for the first item, merong ang code niya ay, P07. Now, a procurement project is lease of venue with meals and rental of lead wall for the procurement forum. And then, ang PMO ay CDD, whatever that office is. Is this uh, early procurement activity? Ang sagot niya, no. Uh, ano ang mode of procurement niya? Negotiated procurement under 53.10 or lease of real property and venue. Kailan ang schedule na kalag ng, ng procurement activity? Sabi niya, ang advertisement is not applicable up to submission of bids kasi nga nag lease of real property siya. No? Pero sabi niya, ang notice of award is expected since ang amount niya ay, ano, ang notice of award will be January, ang contract sign is January, ang source of fund is Government of the Philippines, ang total cost is 3,400,000. And then meron siyang remarks, leave out approximately 1,400 per month and so on and so forth. Now, how, there, um, you might also be familiar in that uh, of cases where you need you have a supplemental bu budget and then you need to use it. You cannot automatically do procurement. Remember, without an approved uh, um, annual procurement plan, if the item you need to do or a project you need to do requires procurement that has to be in an annual procurement plan, then you also need to submit a supplemental annual procurement plan. And this is the process of of. Um, preparing and securing approval of the annual procurement plan. First is the end user update uh, update and prepares a supplemental PPMP. Then the back secretariat will consolidate the PPMPs. No, it should be updated updated. And uh, the updated the consolidated supplemental PPMPs will form part of what you call a supplemental annual procurement plan. No? And then the hope will approve the updated supplemental annual procurement plan. So uh, these are the notes uh, that you have to remember in preparing annual procurement plan. Uh, you remember the Unified Accounts Codes, or I said a while ago, UWACs. Uh, for those who are not familiar with it, please refer to Joint Circular Number 2013-1, COA DBM, BOF, Unified Accounts Code Structure. Yan po yung nilalagay natin. For end users of PMO, sinabi ko na marami uh, for consolidated items, pwede pong multiple end users na kalagay. Para, para naman po sa mode of procurement, since ito pong form na ito, hindi nyo po kailangang i-type ito. No? Kasi inada-download yung form. So form that which you downloaded, kasama na po yung function that, that allows you to see the list of possible mode of procurement. Nakalist daw na po yun. So you just have to select from the list. So in specific requirements uh, for procurement, date ng procurement po, 
um, dapat iligay yung specific period, date, month, and quarter. no So, the bet, mas better po kung merong date. Pero nakalagay po, nakalagay doon kasi kanina ay month lang. Pero if you can specify the date really, then that's okay. No? For the total ABC column that cannot be edited but is automatic, um, hindi po pwedeng i-edit yung ABC column kasi po pag nagagay po kayo ng amount sa MOE column or CO column, updated na po yung ABC no? or actual budget for, budget for the contract. You just have to ensure that the amounts indicated are aligned with the budget documents. Kaya titignan po kasi ni budget officer yung kung to say 6 million siya sabi mo amount na nanggaling sa MOE titingnan niya talaga kung meron kayong allotment for that or allocation for that based on the um appropriation ordinance or AO Pagka naman po as sinabi ko kanina ang, ang project is a for uh, to be implemented using multi-year contracting authority yung yung 3 years na bibigyan kayo ng siguradong pondo dapat po nakalagay yung ABC na based on the multi-year contracting authority in total, pero doon po sa item, doon po sa remarks sa sudulo, nakalagay po yung magkano lang yung i-dispose on that particular year. In my example, sabi ko doon, kanina 10 million lang for 2023. Pero ang ABC is 30 million kasi the project will run for 3 years. Now, uh, annual procurement plan vis-a-vis APPCSE. As I also said early, earlier that there is a separate document submitted to the DBMPS. No? Um, ito po yung APP, uh, Common Use Supplies and Equipment. Yun po yung ginagamit ni DBMPS para malaman kung ano yung mga items na bibilihan ng mga different local government units, na, na, national government agencies eh, next year para yun po yung bibilihan na kaagad nila uh, para pag kinakailangan na pong i uh, gamitin ng mga or i uh, or or i what do you call this um uh, withdraw ng mga different government agencies uh or LGU sa kanila ay may available items so, so, uh, para makapag-prepare din po sila so hindi sila galit ng DBSS for more than the DBSS uh, uh, withdraw ng mga different government um, agencies in accordance uh, with DBM circular or LGU sa kanila ay may available items so, and 2011 6 a no? Ano po ba yung common use supplies? They refer to those supplies and materials and equipment included in the price list of the PS which are necessary in the transaction of official business of the procuring entity tayo po yun and consume in its day-to-day -day operation. So sinasabi ni DBMPS, kapag kami ang bahala sa mga, day, sa mga items, supplies, and materials na no, normally ginagamit ng ninyo sa day-to-day -day operation. If you can remember, there are items also na uh, yung mga green, under green procurement, meron na daw yung mga uh, paper, is, is, what do you call this? Um, yung mga pan paper, yung mga ganun, ano? meron din silang mga uh, tissue, paper, mga ganun, na kung siya, laptops, kung may available pa, na nakalagay na sa kanilang listahan. No? So, na po pwedeng madali lang ma-avail sa kanila. So, pagka ganun po, kung pwede, so, pag, kapag tayo po ay nakapagbigay, big, nakapagbigay sa kanila ng mga plano natin na kailangan natin gamitin for the following year, then if um, if we will use agency to agency, kasi we will uh, uh, agency to agency as a modality of acquiring those items, um, as a mode of procurement, as a separate discussion, then madali po nilang uh, maibibigay or maibibigay sa atin yung kailangan nila dahil naibigay natin in advance yung mga kailangan ng nating items uh, from the previous year. In the previous year. This is an example of an APPCSE. No? They have, the, the format can also, I mean, the template can also be downloaded in the GPPB website. It can also be downloaded in the BBMPS website. <clears throat> We now move to early uh, we now move to early procurement uh, activities. Now ano po ba ang EPA no? E or naririnig natin EPA or EPA. In accordance with GPPB resolution number 14-2019, it refers to the conduct of procurement from posting of the procurement opportunity if required until recommendation of the back to the home as to the award of the contract for goods to be delivered, infrastructure projects to be implemented, and consulting services to be rendered in the following fiscal year pending approval of their respective funding sources. Ito yung pagka isa sa mga initiatives na ginawa or programs na ginawa or changes or policy changes na ginawa po ng, ng GPPB 
para matulungan po yung mga government agencies na ma-improve po o ma-expedite yung, yung use ng government fund at yung implementation ng project. Alam din po natin na siyempre kaya po binigyan ng national government or ng, ng, ng local government ng pondo ang isang proyekto is because yung pong proyekto na yon ay kinaalam ng local government or national government na kinakailangan ng bayan. So mararapat lamang na sabi nila dapat bigyan ng priority yon And we allow for a certain level of flexibility and uh, not not necessarily flexibility but a program that will help implement that project as early as possible. So ang ginawa po nila, meron pong programa na EPA na tinatawag na kung saan uh, kung, kung meron na po tayong um, items na nagsasabi na ikaw ay bibig based on the local expenditure program or LEP or sa national government and kapag yung sa net expenditure program na lumalabas usually October of the current of a net expenditure program for the issuing year na lumalabas usually uh, October, November of the current year, pag nandudun ka na, nandudun yung gusto mong, for example, binigyan ka ng national government or doon sa, sa local expenditure program ng pondo para sa pagpapatayo ng, ng low, um, LGU hospital no? na uh, 30 million ang binigay sa'yo. So, ang ibig sabihin lang nun, ang nilagay mo ngayon sa indicative APP mo at nagpa-approve ka ng indicative APP mo. Kung na-approve na, then you can duck you can already commence na the 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 the, the bidding activities ang ibig sabihin nun, pwede ka na mag-submit ng bid hanggang kailan lang, hanggang mag-recommend yung ating back ng award. Pag recommendation ng award, titigil siya. Bakit? Remember that EPA is based on an indicative annual procurement plan. Pag sinabi nating indicative, ibig sabihin wala pang siguradong pera na or budget allotted for it, pero may plano. No, and it's in the government's priority. No, so ano pa ano po yung additional requirement na kailangan alam natin about EPA? No, bakit muna tayo kailangan magkandak ng EPA? Sinabi ko kanina dapat para mas mapaaga po yung completion ng procurement projects. Kasi kung halimbawa ng mapabit na po siya at ma, ma at may recommend na for award ng December of the, the budget will be utilized for the ensuing year, susunod na taon, pero na-approve na yung award, yung, yung recommend, no, na recommend na ng back yung award as early as December of, of this year, pagdating, pag, pagtapak ng, ng following year where that fund will be used, eh, madali na lang yung approval. Mas mapaaga po, mapapaaga po yung pag, pag, pag-conduct, pag-implement ng project. No? Timely implementation of projects. At syempre, mas maaga rin yung magatapos. And effectively manage procurement projects. Kasi the other procurement activities, pwede yung nanitira mo pang effort at activities can be given to other uh, equally important projects or activities. Pero ang kagandahan nito, since you plan it in advance, mas mabilis mo, mabilis mo natapos at ma, yung, yung, yung uh, procurement project, mas madaling ma, maagang mapapakinabangan ng mamamayan yung proyekto natin. At syempre, mas effective yung procurement pro- uh, management of procurement projects Plus, kasi um, meron pong uh, kaakibat na mga strategy if you will follow this. Ano po yun? No? I will tell you later. Uh, that's uh, in the, the later section of these slides. Now, sino po yung covered ng, ng mga EPA? Ang covered po ng EPA it would be it, uh, procurement of goods, infrastructure, and consulting services under the following funds. Pag GAA sa mga national government agencies or kasama po yung sa mga local government units funded under appropriation ordinance. No? So pasok po yan and, uh, and others that were mentioned. A procurement project shall refer to a specific or identified procurement which shall be described, detailed, and scheduled in the PPFP which shall be consolidated in the APP. No? EPA is applicable for procurement projects undertaken through, remember, competitive bidding as well as alternative methods of procurement. Meron po exception. Ibig sabihin, hindi po ito kasama. Po? Yes, alternative methods of procurement ito, pero ito yung exception. Repeat order, shopping, negotiated procurement under emergency cases, under takeover of contracts, and under small value procurements. Uh, procurement. Please remember the exceptions. All the appropriate preparatory activities dapat po gawin natin pa rin. Kahit na siya po ay EPA, katulad ng sinabi ko, may cost-benefit analysis din tayo, may feasibility study, kung kinakailangan as applicable po ito, no? may market research, at kung siya po ay infrastructure project, dapat uh, 
So we're ready po siya, no? Including the those requirements that I have mentioned. At remember ito po yung, remember po ng APP or the indicative APP must be approved by the head of the procuring entity and must be submitted to, in your case, since we are LGUs, sanggulian. So required po yun. Na ano po yung mga preparatory activities? Hindi po required yung, dati po kasi bago before tayo makapag, uh, before an item can be endorsed by the back for procurement, kailangan ni back ng, ng head ng ano eh, ng uh, certificate of availability of funds para masigurado may pondo para dyan. Kapag po ang, ang procurement is through EPA, hindi po required, nire-require ang CAF. No? In accordance with GPPB Circular Number 5-2018 dated May 18, 2018, no? hindi po natin i-require ang CAF. The bidding documents and field jobs posting shall expressly provide that the procurement project is undertaken through EPA para malaman po ng mga participating bidders na siya ay, ay procurement through EPA. At kung EPA, may kaakibat po mga um, clay, uh, uh, disclaimer na dapat alam yung uh, participating bidders like pag magpa-participate po sila at hindi ma ma bigla na lang ma-remove ma ma yung or tanggalin yung pondo for that project, they will, the, the, the procuring entity implementing the project or bidding the project will not be liable for any um, for anything, no? Uh, for well, Provided na wala silang gawang, ginawang mali, no? But again, uh, alam dapat ng bidder yun in case EPA po ang gagamitin natin, i-implement natin. Now, other preparatory activities include na yung bidders natin alam na ang rules na gagamitin or procedures for EPA. Alam nila dapat na ang, since EPA ito, hindi magbabago ang price. Kung pag sinabi nila noong December na, nung nag-open na bids na, ang presyo natin ay 7 million. Kahit na March pa the following year, lumabas ang award, then alam na dapat yung, EP, yung, yung price na yun will not change. It will be 7 million if, if it will be awarded to them. Kung dapat alam din nila na kapag na-extend yung, uh, yung award, yung date where it, the contract can be awarded, dapat may res responsibilidad nila mag-submit na extension of bid validity and security. And dapat alam din nila the validity of eligibility requirements prior to the award should be a must. No? Ibig sabihin, all the eligibility requirements must be valid before the contract will be awarded to them. No? Conditions of the award should also be notified to them and the date of the earliest delivery should also be notified to them. Okay? Again, we are down to, uh, I think, the second to the last knowledge check. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, at this point, we will be having our fourth knowledge check. So may we ask our participants to type in their answer to the Zoom chat box. So this time po, yung answer nyo is magagaling sa Zoom cha chat box. And we will be giving another special token to the first participant who will answer the question correctly. So for proper identification, we will be selecting the participants who answered correctly with the suggested name format, which is yung MLGU name underscore full name. So ready na po ba tayo? So may we ask our technical team to please flash the prize question. And so the question is, early procurement activity is applicable for procurement projects undertaken through negotiated procurement, small value procurement. So is it A, true or B, false? Again, early procurement activity is applicable for procurement projects undertaken through negotiated procurement small value procurement is it true or false so we will be accepting po uh, either answer a or b or true or false and so while our technical team is ver verifying po yung correct uh, first participant who answered correctly uh, so reminder lang po Na after this uh, activity, we can evaluate the resource speaker through the evaluation link through Google Forms uh, shared to you by our event secretariat. So let me check lang po if meron na po tayong um, winner. Or before that, ma'am, 
Hi, sir. Can we, uh, no, put the correct answer. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Janelle. Either way, we'll do. <laughs> the answer, correct answer is letter B. So, it's false po. So, nakalagay po yun sa list of exceptions ng ating, uh, kung baga hindi applicable yung EPA doon. So, it's not applicable to um, small value procurement. Thank you. Congratulations to the winner. So, upon verification of our technical team, congratulations, MLGU Titay, Miss Rizaline Malone. Ayan, congratulations, ma'am. Our technical team will uh, coordinate with you on how you may claim your special token. So, thank you so much for actively participating on our poll question. So, let's continue po on the last part of our lecture. Welcome back. We are down to the last section of this presentation for today. <laughs> now, oh, we will continue with EPA, now, our early procurement um, activity. The conduct of EPA from posting the recommendation of the PAC to the whole as to the award of the contract shall observe the mandatory timeline set forth in the 2016 I. IRR of RA 9184, <laughs> including the period for the bidding, which shall be within 15 days, right? and so on and so forth. Ang sinasabi lang po nito, alam po natin na ang RA 9184 kasi like what was presented to you in the previous uh, discussion, no? um, in, in when you were presented of the process and the, the required number of days which you need to, which you are required to follow in, in the conduct of procurement, no? mag- hold pa rin po yun, no? Yung mandatory timelines, pasok pa rin po yun, no? We will still, no change po yun. Ibig sabihin, may mga, yung number of days required kapag regular procurement yan will still be the same, including yung period ng rebidding na alam natin na kapag ka nagkaroon ng first failure bidding, dapat within 15 days, pwede kang mag, mag, um, mag, mag rebid ng project na yan, ano? Kapag nagkaroon ng declaration of failure of bidding, which may be extended to 30 uh, calendar days no upon the approval of the whole but again uh um up to award of up the, the recommendation of the or up the up to the point only where the back has recommended the award of the contract hanggang doon lang din naman muna po now as soon as the funding source of the pro procurement project has been approved regardless of the state pwede na po tayo mag-revise ng indicative ABP. Now, ang ibig sabihin po nito, ang sinabi po natin, di ba, uh, nag-conduct po tayo ng procurement. Let's say, for example, uh, let's use my procurement or construction of uh, of an LG hospital as an example. Let's say, nilagay mo yung sinabi na sa appropriation, uh, sorry, sa yung um, local expenditure program na bibigyan ka ng 30 million for that. So, sa indicative APP mo, may 30 million ka for the uh, construction of a local hospital or LG hospital. Nag-start ka ngayon ng bidding ng October, tapos ka ng, ng December, up to award lang. Nirecommend na ni, meron kang tatlong bidders na nag-participate. Si ABC, during the, no, during the, during the uh, bidding, na disqualify CC no so, na, na post disqualify CC so ang nangyari sorry na disqualify outright CC so ang natira na lang ay dalawa si A and B si B ngayon yung lowest calculated and responsive bid so ni recommend kayo di ba o dumiretso ka from posting simula posting hanggang doon sa opening of bids hanggang sa post qualification hanggang nagrecommend na si back for award december si back nagrecommend ng award kay B no so remember, ang ano ang hihintayin? Magsa-stop kayo ngayon ng procurement activity. Hanggang doon lang. Ang hihintayin nyo, ma-approve yung o ma-release yung annual appropriation ordinance bago kayo makapag-revise ng indicative APP. So revision of the indicative APP ay gagawin nyo as soon as ma-award yung contract kasi makikita nyo kung nagbago yung amount eh, kung yun pa rin ba yung budget na available. Pagkatapos yung ma-revise, upon approval of the indicative APP para maging APP, 
and the commencement of running of the period to award the contract and complete the procuring process, the hope may approve or disapprove the recommendation of the BAC. No? Again, halimbawa na amend na yung, uh, yung uh, indicative APP and APP na siya. No? At syempre, na, na dumin, du, uh, yung, yung di ba, alam, uh, if I, I don't know if you were if you are aware already na ang buong procurement process should not exceed 90 calendar 90 days no or 3 months so a fixed tayo doon kasi beyond that kailangan mo na matinding justification pwede nang maging problema yon na maging basis na teka mali na yung proseso niyo pwedeng maging kawabol yon and other administrative problems that will crop up later because of that but let's say um, for for argument's sake, just to apply it here, meron lang tayo dapat talagang 90 days or 3 months. Ibig sabihin nun, let's say na, na, maximum, na, na nagamit na natin yung first 2 months, so ang natitira na lang ay uh, the third month, isang buwan na lang. Yung isang buwan na yun, magsastart ulit mag, pagka yung dalawang buwan na yun, no, nag-recommend tayo ng award, hanggang doon magsastop siya. Yung natitirang isang buwan, maaaring magsastart lang ulit ang counting para maabot mo yung, bago mo abot yung, 90, yung 90th day na required na hindi mo dapat malampasan kapag na-approve yung, na-release yung annual, yung appropriation ordinance. Mm. Kaya dapat mabilis po tayo. Now, once na-approve na po yung, lumabas na yung appropriation ordinance at napa-approve natin ng APP, no, at APP na tayo, ah, sorry, napa-approve natin yung APP, pwede na yung ating hope mag-approve or mag-disapprove ng award. Pag mag approve siya, syempre, magre-release na tayo ng notice of award sa lowest calculated and responsive bid at kung, kapag goods and infra project or to the highest rated and responsive bid kapag consulting ang project services. Pwede rin namang i-disapprove ni HOPE or, uh, by notifying the back and the bidder in writing of the decision and the grounds. No? May mga grounds for that decision in accordance, for example, with Section 41 na maaaring one of the reasons ay may nakitang mali sa process na pinalaw ng back or maaaring merong connivance, collusion, or mga practices like that between the back or and among ano, or participating bidder or, or nakita, oh, kinuha yung budget kulang na yung budget, maaaring yun yung mga uh, re, uh, require, I mean, parameters involved um, which the, the head of the procuring entity or the LCE, local chief executive, can, can use or cite as a basis for its disapproval of the award no? in, in accordance with Section 41 of RA 9184. So pwedeng ang action niya ay approval or disapproval. Now, the final approved APP shall be submitted to the GPPB on or before the end of January of the budget year and shall be posted in accordance with Executive Order 662, Series of 2007 as amended. Let me, now what are we going to do? To give you examples no, on what cases should be should we award the product, the contract and what cases should we not award the contract. In this example, what you see are are one provisions of the law and number two examples. No, and what to do later on whether to award or not to award. For example, the laws pertinent to award of the contract under EPA for as applied to EPA project. Uh, pro, procurement projects or implemented through EPA or early procurement activity. Rule number one is notwithstanding, meaning regardless of the mandatory requirement uh, procurement timeline provided in Section 37 of RA 9184, procurement projects undertaken through EPA may be awarded upon, upon approval and effectivity of appropriation ordinance. I will jump to one, the one that, is, that applies to you. Approval or if, and effectivity of appropriation ordinance. Uh, now, example, no? kapag ang lumabas, now let, let me tell you again, remind you that NEP in your case, since we're talking about LGU, would refer to local expenditure program. For example, sa local expenditure program ninyo, ay may binigyan kayo ng 1, ng, ng 1 million for the construction of LGU hospital. Okay, so nag-commence kayo ng bidding sa, na, sa October na tapos kayo ng hanggang recommendation ng award ng December. Sa December, yung nung nag-post kayo ng ABC, sinabi niyo ang project niyo is 1 million. Kasi sinabi niyo kayo ng LEP niyo, 1 million for that hospital. Ngayon, pagdating ng award, ng recommendation ng award, meron kayo tatlong tatlo, dalawang bidders na natira using the, may previous example kasi CC na disqualified. So, 
ang LCRB ni B ay 1 million, no? Now, come January, na-approve ngayon yung at effective na yung appropriation ordinance. Nakita niyo ngayon na meron kayo doong 1 million. In that case, since merong budget for for the payment of LCRB if ever if it will be awarded to that contractor, then pwede si B pwedeng i-award yung contract kay B. However, in the case of re-enacted budget, please remember in, in cases re-enacted siya kasi ibig sabihin, hindi pa na-approve yung appropriation ordinance, eh, then you will work in a re-enacted budget. Kapag re-enacted budget yan, tayong mga local government agencies can only award contracts for recurring procurement projects and not for new procurement projects. In this case, since it's a new hospital, it's um it, you cannot award the contract. Pero for recurring um procurement projects like for example yung, yung multi-year contracting authority na meron tayo then pwede yon kasi um nandoon siya sa um nandoon pa rin siya sa uh, sigurado for for the uh, for the appropriation ordinance <clears throat> kahit madelay yung kanyang release no rule number two, if the amount authorized for a procurement project has been reduced the PE may still award make an award if the contract to be awarded is within the amount authorized in the GAA. Or, sorry, authorized in the appropriations ordinance. Example, ang sa local uh, um, expenditure program nyo na hospital ay 1.2 million. Nung nag-post yung back, ginamit nila sa invitation to bid, oh, the cost is 1.2 million. Nagkaroon kayo ng tatlong contract uh, prospective bidders, na-disqualified si C, natira si B, ang kanyang offered price ay one mi- uh, L, uh, price is only 1 million. So siya yung nirecommend ng BAC na lowest calculated responsive bid. Come January, naglabas na ngayon ng AO, Appropriation Ordinance. Ang sinasabi ni ngayon ni AO, ang pera lang namin na kaya ibigay sa iyo ay 1 million. One, uh, ang binala, binibigay namin sa iyo ay 1 million lang for that project. Question, i-award mo ba sa LCRB kahit na ang nakalagay sa local, sa sa executive budget na submitted by the by the local chief executive is or the local expenditure program is just is 1.2 was 1.2 million the answer is yes award bucket kasi yun, nasa loob yung LCRB yung yung kanyang offered price is still within the allotment available in the appropriation ordinance so pwede pa rin po no the award Rule number, uh, and these are how now the cases where we should not award a contract. If the amount, therefore, has been withdrawn or in the event the amount authorized in the, the appropriation ordinance is lower than the amount of contract to be awarded, then do not award a contract. So again, withdrawn or reduced na mas mababa doon sa LCRB ang available budget, then do not award a contract. Example number one, withdrawn. Ano? Ang binigay sa local expenditure program na budget sa inyo for that hospital is 1.5 million. Nung nagbidding kayo, 1.5 ang ABC. Nung narecommend kayo kay B, 1.3 million na lang. No? Kasi sabi niya, 1.3 ang kaya ko. Uh, ay, ang, ang kaya ko yung bilhin, 1.3 million. Nung lumabas si appropriation ordinance, na walang kayo ng budget for that. So you cannot award a contract. Declare failure of bidding in, a, in accordance with section, four, section 41 of RA 9184. Okay? Se- example number two, we're in, nat- tinggal yung budget. No? Example number two, na kung saan nireduce yung budget at yung reduction is big enough na hindi nakakayanin yung contract na na in-offer ng LCRB. No? Example, sa NEP or Local Expenditure Program, binigyan kayo ng 1 million. Binig nyo siya ng 1 million. Nung nag-recommend kayo sa, na, ng award kay B, for example, contractor B, ng 900,000. Nung lumabas yung um, ating administ- uh, appropriation ordinance, 800,000 lang yung budget na kayang ibigay sa inyo. Again, do not award the, the contract pursuant to Section 41 of RE9184. Ang gagawin nyo na lang dyan, since meron kayong available fund, is to rebid. Pero make sure na yung whatever that project is, that will be within that um, allotment. Okay? In all instances, tayo, the, the uh, local chief executive has the authority to exercise the reservation clause under Section 41 of RA 9184, which grants him or her the right not to award a contract for justifiable and reasonable ground. 
the award of the contract will not redound to the benefit of the government. So, pwedeng-pwede niya po yun. Nakalista po yun doon. No? Kaya la, we advise all our chief executives to please be familiar with all of those um, parameters or which are the basis for you, you can use not to award the contract to any um, to the bidder. No? Example is, uh, yun nga po, you, there's, you found out that the back has failed to follow the required procedure. Number two, um, uh, hindi na nga po uh, economically feasible yung doing the contract will not read down to the benefit of the government. Number three, tinanggal yung budget or nireduce po yung budget. Number four, po, pwede po kayo halaman, nalaman nyo, uh, na mayroong collusion between the, you know, collusion involved, which involved uh, the contractor to be awarded the contract and the bid the back. If there's reasonable cost to believe or probable cost to believe, and then there are, you know, the, though those are the possible grounds for declaring failure of bidding in accordance with that section or section 41 of RNA 184. That withstanding the approval of and effectivity of um, appropriation ordinance, you mga local government uh, units shall not award contracts for procurement projects requiring special allotment release order or some allotment release order until it is made available or secured or released. Example po, may mga yung congressional insertions, if you remember, mayroong mga, you know, may mga nadagdag na budget, pero um, yung insertion na yun, is be, um, congressional insertion na siya. Ibig sabihin, may, naka na, may nakalagay yung open and close parenthesis usually na for later release or FLR. Kapag for later release po siya, that's an example of a project that requires special allotment release order. No? So hindi po natin pwedeng i-award ka agad yun unless uh, makuha na natin yung copy ng special release order. So the award should be based on the availability of, of securing that SARO or uh, um, sub-allotment release order. Now, please remember, there is also this thing, um, you remember that uh, after the BAC, also apply, still applies to a, um, EPA, after the BAC has recommended the award of the contract no, to a particular bidder, magtotol yung period. Anong ibig sabihin ng tolling of period? Using my own terms, it's like freezing uh, the counting of the days. Kumbaga, Y yung, yung di ba, alam natin na sinabi ko kanina, 90 days lang. And usually, nagtitik na yung clock mo. Pag start pa lang ng invitation to bid, abay, yung everyday mo, nagtitik yung clock. Dapat bago makarating yun sa 90 days, natapos na yung procurement mo, awarded na. Ay, paano, um, using my own example, kapag nag-award ka ng contract use, uh, and under uh, procurement um, implemented using EPA, titigil yung clock na yun. No? But again, nandito na yung clock, tumigil siya dito. The 15 day, the following period shall be told or freezed or suspended no? during the time. Yung 15 day period na that the hope is given to approve the resolution of the back. So yun ay naka-freeze or naka-suspend. Ibig sabihin, that will be availed upon by the head of the procuring entity once that clock are, uh, continuous or resume sticking. No? So, po, pwede niyang i-avail pa rin yan same number of days pag nag-start ng mag-continuously mag, mag, mag taking yung clock. As well as the three-month period na to complete the procurement process na sinabi ko. No? Again, based on uh, upon approval of the appropriation ordinance. Effectivity yun, ang appropriation ordinance. So, ito yung mga told periods. I will give you an example later. <clears throat> The period of time for the award of the contract and determination of procurement, of procurement process as the case may be shall begin to run again. Ay, ibig sabihin lang po nito, kapag um, yung appropriation ordinance po ay na-release na, na-enact na, na-approve na, na, na po, hindi, uh, mag dere diretso na upulit mag-tick yung clock no? hanggang maabot yung 30 days, ay, yung 90 days. No? But it will not start anew. Big sabi hindi siya babalik na meron ka ulit na 90 days na available for you. But it will only give you the remaining number of um, the remaining number of days left for you to complete the 90 day period to complete the procurement activities. So again, it will continue taking para bago maabot yung 90 days. It shall not commence anew. Yun po yung big sabi nitong slide na ito. Now to give you a more uh, concrete example of that, let's say. Uh, we are procuring that uh, LGU hospital for what your LGU. Nag-start kayo ng July 30, nag-bid opening kayo ng July 30. 
no let's say July 30 will be the opening nung July October 11 nag-recommend ang back ng award no 73 days yun ang gamit mo noon now um from October 12 up to the day before the approval of the activity the appropriation ordinance, told yung period na yun, ibig sabihin, hindi siya counted. Kung baga, although gumagana yung araw, hindi siya counted doon sa pag-count ng 90-day period. No? Now, say January 1, na-approve yung uh, appropriation ordinance. So from January 1, may up to uh, January 18, meron kang 17 days to complete the three-month period. Kaya, eh, alam natin, di ba, I told you earlier that the 15-day period uh, where th that is accorded to the head of the procuring entity, um, I mean, the prescriptive 15-day period accorded to the head of the procuring entity, which is the LCE, to approve the contract will run again. I mean, will will now run, will commence. So from January 1, you have to co to complete the 15 days na para ma-approve ni LCE yung kontrata, may siya 15 days up to January 16. Now, let's say na-maximize na yung January 16. No? Yung hope na award niya ng January 16, Meron na lang siyang natitirang up to January 18 para ma-complete yung three-month process. No? So, 17 days to, to, to release the notice to proceed, to, to con sign the con no, sorry, to release the notice to proceed. So, yan po yung sabi nating tolling of period. Okay, we're now down to the last part. Now, how do we post um, the electronic post and submit the electronic uh, procurement uh, the electronic forms or files of procurement reports no this is a simplified way of doing it ito po yung reportorial requirements to the GPPB january of the current let's say um it's 2023 this uh 23 ngayon, no? next year is 2020 uh, sorry 2022 this year next year is 2023 assuming that's said the year so as of January of the current fiscal year, for fiscal year, the approved APP shall be submitted to the GPP by January 30 of 2022. Ngayon. By July, updated APP shall be submitted to the GPP by July. No, ang ibig sabihin ng kasasabi natin, updating of the APP may be done with um, six months or less, no, more frequently as, as the need arises. Dito, within six months from January to June may activities and there has been there's a need for to add or to modify the approved APP. So you approve revised or, or amended APP for the first six months should be submitted to the I mean that 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 um sorry that the approved APP which with an amended uh, procurement activities from January to June should be submitted to the GPPB by July of the current year. Now by July 14, dapat yung procurement monitoring report for the first semester, first semester is January to June, shall be again submitted to the GPP by Ju not later than July 14. Pagdating ng January 2023, dapat yung updated APP shall be submitted to the GPP by January. No? Ang ibig sabihin nun, that already includes the changes done from July to December of 2022. And um, the PMR... Uh, for the second semester, which is July to December of 2022, shall be submitted not later than January 14, 2023. And by when that uh, and in March 2023, dapat your agency procurement compliance performance indicator shall be submitted to the GPPB by March 31. The, uh, when we say procurement reports, I am referring to uh, APP. Re, uh, the procurement reports refer to the APP the Procurement Monitoring Reports, or PMR, as well as the APCPI. Ano yung mga submit, mandatory submission ng requirements? Mandatory submission through electronic email of the following. Remember that procurement reports, again, the procurement reports refers to the three, APP, PMR, and APCPI. Dapat yung tatlong, may tatlong cap, uh, Excel for uh, files, ang APP, PMR, and CS, and the um, and uh, APP, PMR, and APCPI. At meron din siyang tat tatlong PDF versions. No? Yung APP, PMR, at, 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 um, at the APCPI. Plus, a certification signed by the um, back secretariat head that the APP and the PMR are, were posted in the agency's website, sa website po ninyo, and the and website ninyo, as well as, syempre, we, we add yung mga, yung mga places where we put bidding opportunities within the vicinity that 
uh, reserved for the purpose. No? And please remember the discontinuation or discontinuance of posting uh, the same in the GPPB website. Kasi yung dati, required tayo mag-post sa GPPB website ng approved um, procurement reports. Hindi na po required ang, ngayon ang pag-post ng AP, approved APPs and PMRs sa GPPB, web, GPPB website, sa atin dala po mga respective um, websites. Okay. We will now, uh, I will now again turn you over to our, um, to the final, uh, to our GPPB associate, um, associate uh, for the knowledge share question. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So for our last knowledge check, may we ask our technical assistant to flash the question. And the question is, in the case of budget, the procuring entity may also award the contract for new procurement projects undertaken through EPA. Is it A, true or B, false? Again, in the case of a re-enacted budget, the procuring entity may also award the contract for new procurement projects undertaken through EPA. Is it true or false? Medyo 50-50 po yung adding participants regarding this question. <laughs> so I'll be giving you po uh, five seconds. Five, four, three, two, and one. Ayun po, sir. So, medyo 50-50 po sila. 49% uh, answered true and 51% answered false. Ano po bang correct answer dito? Uh, we're happy to know na at least majority still, 51% na to ay tama po. So, the correct answer po is false, no? In case of re-enacted budget, the PMA award the contract for new procurement. Siya sabi po natin, so new procurement projects hindi po. Doon lang po sa may mga continuing appropriations. So again, for new pro procurement projects, hindi po pwede i-award kaagad. Under for, for procurement projects um, implemented through EPA. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sir Benson Limpiada, for facilitating a very informative and comprehensive discussion on procurement planning and budget linkage, including early procurement activities. At this point, Sir, uh, wait for us. We will be having our open forum. Our technical team has gathered your questions in the Zoom chat box and Facebook comment section. May we ask our technical team to please flash the questions. I believe, sir, uh, we have five questions po from Zoom chat box and Facebook. Thank you. Sige po. Okay, while well, our technical team is having some difficulties in flashing the question, um, can I read na lang po the first question? Sure, sure no problem po. Uh, the first question is, who are the responsible entity that will conduct the market study, feasibility study, and cost-benefit analysis? Is it the BAC or the end user? Um. It's the end user. No? From the very beginning, alam natin na sila yung nakakaalam ng mga technical requirements. No? Na kaila, sila yung may ownership nung dapat nung, nung technical requirements kasi yung technical requirements itatali nila sa kanilang mga kailangan gawin. Ano? Say, as like what I said in my example, if you intend to expedite the processing of licenses and you need computers, alam mo yung anong klaseng computer, anong processor dapat ang kailangan mo para para pag binili mo siya, you'll be able to attain your desired the desired outcome that you plan. So, itong mga end users po ang nakakaalam na kung ano po yung technical requirements nila. So, dapat yung mga end users po, we expect them and they're the one responsible in conducting market study, feasibility study, and cost-benefit analysis. 
of course the entity of course sh should provide help to to the, the end users no when way they do this no? so it's the end users responsible for conducting the um, market study feasibility study and cost benefit analysis thank you noted po, sir. so thank for you. the next question Iba-iba po ang unit of measure and at prices sa PPMP na isinabmit ng mga end users. Anong strategy po ang dapat namin gawin para harmonize po yung unit of measure prices in a particular item? Uh, the answer to this is not restrictive. Ano? So since we're talking about strategy, I'll, I'll share those that I have uh, witnessed um, in our other agencies. No, uh, we, the, the law is not uh, does not specifically mention kung ano yung mga strategies ko. So, tayo makakaalam ng kung anong po pwede. Uh, tama po yung tanong niyo kasi this is an example na where problems crop up later on. Talagang nagbabago-bago. Ang ginagawa po ng ibang agency na nakita po natin effective is that meron po silang procurement office or yung procurement personnel na in charge would um, have kung hindi po procurement office, meron kung whoever is in charge of the procurement, they release uh, a, a, a list of, of items with prices na, na kinuha na from, from the, the, the market, no? available market. Yung iba doon, pinag, uh, I have already showed you the sources of the possible prices. Pwede yung Pwede market study, pwede the industry, pwede uh, you ask the experts about it, at least para iisa lang. No? It's very similar to the strategy we use, uh, we adapted from DBMPS na kung saan sila nagbibigay mismo ng list of items and then yung prices. Um, the same can also be adapted in, in procuring some other items that are outside the list of uh, those available at DBMPS. No? Pwede mag-initiate yung isang unit or ng ating office na magpo-provide ng mga listahan ng items and specific units na gagamitin to procure that para maging uniform po. No, since it's the back debates in awards committee and the back secretariat will consolidate it, I think it's but 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 uh, proper and would be easier if the if it's the bids in awards committee or the back secretariat uh, together with the um, the siguro sabi na natin procurement officials who will initiate that uh, strategy just so mas maging uniform yung um, prices and yung unit na gagamitin ng bawat end users when they prepare the PPMP. Thank you. Thank you for, for that suggestion. I hope makatulong po tayo sa ating mga LGU officials yes, na mahawak ngayon ng procurement. Ayan. So for our third question, Kailangan po ba na complete specifications ang nilalagay sa PPMP or sa purchase request na lang i-reflect yung complete specification ng item being procured? Example is printer. Um, nilalagay po natin yung uh, this, not, not that complete yung nasa sa PPMP po at least enough to describe the performance or the and um, what do you call this, performance specification or um, description of the item that you wish to purchase. Tama po kayo na hindi naman ganun kakadetalyado ang kailangan na kailagay sa PPMP dahil it will consume the entire PPMP. So as a matter of practice, what happens is that yung sufficient uh, detail or information tayo po ang magpo-provide no, na alam natin na naba, printer at least nakalagay na doon yung essential details ng printer or technical specification about the printer. There are other minute details na very detailed requirements na pwede nating ilagay definitely sa, sa purchase requests. So, hindi naman po ganun kadami ang mga, siyempre kung magiging very detailed po tayo, kakainin po ng PPMP yung, yung pagsulat pa lang ng maraming technical requirements na para lang sa printer. So, general specification po sa PPMP ay pwede naman din po yun. Basta detailed and descriptive enough na hindi na ma descriptive to the extent na hindi naman din uh, mag magiging kung ba magagamit yung buong page. At least enough for for the back uh, the business words committee and the technical working group to determine that those are actually the items that you need no and the requirements that you need thank you thank you po so last two questions po the next question is if after market study 
the result conducted to three suppliers have three different prices, what amount will be adopted as the ABC, the highest, median, or lowest price? Uh, we already made mention about um, uh, economy, no? Sa economy. We... It, First, we have to consider the correct answer is yung pinaka, syempre, yung pinaka mababa na the same, the same, uh, the same characteristics, the same requirements, specification, pero yung pinaka mababa. Please remember na kapag tayo po nag-conduct ng market study, we already have with us the list of technical requirements. May idea na tayo kung paano yung general requirements at unit performance and performance requirements. Yung, yung nando doon na po yun. Ano, functional and performance requirements. So as you can see, Kung titingnan po natin yung, yung lahat ng mga ng mga available items in the market, we can put them in a table and compare them and uh, we'll be able to identify which among them really meets the requirements. If say for example there are three requirements or I uh, suppliers na nakita natin and they can provide the same set of requirements, but nagkakaiba-iba na lang po tayo sa sa prices, syempre doon pa rin po tayo pupunta sa pinaka lowest kasi ang ang gagawin po natin ang, ang assumption doon is yung technical requirements natin are were, our specific our functional and performance requirements were all satisfied at the lowest cost and po so that is again um as assuming that um uh, Assuming that you have also considered the other cause, because in this particular question, I am, uh, I am tempted to answer based on the parameters that is in, involved or that is available in the question. But this particular question also um, lacks the information, or this does not necessarily uh, disregards the idea that there are other costs associated with it. Although my answer is limited to this na hindi sinama yung other costs involved but i would really suggest that in in writing the abc since you include the abc the acquisition cost is just one of the the uh, that that you have to consider so if it's just the acquisition cost as far as in in so far as acquisition cost is concerned who could not attain your own lowest uh, price now if there are other costs to be added to that acquisition cost, then we will have to add it to that acquisition cost. For example, the freight charges, um, the warranty security permits and licenses, which could be added to that. So, uh, yun yung magiging basis natin ng uh, approved budget for the contract. So, yun po yung sinasabi natin na, na that's a very nice question. Kasi ito yung nailalabas po yung minsan yung, yung idea na talagang ang mga end users minsan ang tingin lang po talagang ang, uh, there is a tendency na ang tingnan nila ang ABC only refers to the acquisition cost. No? So napakakalimutan natin that there are also other associated costs. So again, if you're talking about uh, within the parameters of this question, if we're talking about the, the which one will be uh, selected from among the items, yung, yung pong pinakamababa because the assumption is yung pinakamababa is lowest price pero lahat ng requirements ng ating end users ay na-met Plus, in the setting up the ABC, that acquisition cost with the, low, the, the lowest estimate plus the other costs associated with um, with delivering that product, like uh, freight charges um, and other permits and licenses to acquire whatever the associated cost para lang ma-deliver sa atin and use uh, procuring entities yung um, item na po na yan. Thank you, Paul, for a, for a very nice question. I hope that answers your question. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Paul. So for our last question, as a general rule, lahat ng procurement activities nakalagay or naka-indicate sa PPMP or APP, kasama po ba ang infrastructure projects? If yes, paano po? Ang um, nakalagay po, uh, let me, uh, okay, procurement activities nakalagay na is naka-indicate sa APP. PPMP. Ang nakalagay po sa APP and PPMP is the title of the infrastructure project. For example, um, construction of a medical uh, LGU LGU hospital. Now that too, and then there's an ABC. That alone is the title that, that will appear in the PPMP. However, a part of the attachment which I've mentioned along with that PPMP, if you be very strict about it, um, will be the terms of reference, if not the terms of reference, this is the uh, scope of work and the pro a POW or the program of works, which program of work, the scope of work, which will contain the details of how um, that particular project will be 
will be uh, implemented. Lahat ng mga cost items, nakalagay po doon, detailed engineering requirements, nakalagay doon po sa attachment, no? uh, sa, na terms of reference, although ang terms of reference uh, apply, applicable sa, alam natin, sa consulting services, although nagpe-prepare na yun tayo ng terms of reference for for uh, construction or infrastructure projects. So, the direct answer here is uh, naglalagay po tayo ng general title sa PPMP and then APP and then attached to the PPMP and APP would be the POW, the T detailed engineering design and other requirements po para makandak yung project natin. So, hindi po natin mailalagay lahat yung details noon sa PPMP and annual procurement plan but they will just be attached to the APP and PPMP. Um, to support the procurement project. Salamat po! Thank you, sir. And that concludes our open forum. Hi, Did salamat po. <laughs> Nakatapos tayo. Maraming salamat po. If you have more questions, you may still ask them out even after this webinar by visiting slido.com. All you have to do is to just type in the event code hashtag government procurement PH to which the GPPBTSO will answer true on issue ones or true FAQs. With that, we would like to thank our resource speaker, Sir Benson, Mr. Limpiada, for graciously accepting our invitation to be a part of this online training. You're always welcome. Thank you for having me and thank you everybody for staying at to this time. For our winners, our event secretariat will contact you on how you may claim your tokens. Before we end our program, allow me to synthesize our session for today. We have an in-depth learning discussion about the fundamentals of procurement planning, understand the basic principles of market study and project costing, preparation of PPMP, APP, and the conduct of early procurement activities. Most importantly, we were able to tackle the importance of planning procurement projects with proper budget allocations within the given timeline. Before we end today's sessions, allow me to make a few final reminders. So after the end of our program, participants are likewise reminded to evaluate the training activity and resource speaker through Google Form by the link shared to you by our event secretariat through chat box. Rest assured that all information gathered for this online training shall be treated with utmost confidentiality consistent with the provisions of the Data Privacy Act. Important reminders on our certificates. Certificate of attendance shall be issued to confirm participants who are present all throughout our five-day activity. Certificate of completion shall be awarded to confirm participants who successfully completed the online training, participated in the knowledge check, and complied with all requirements. Otherwise, certificate of participations will be issued to you. For questions and other concerns, please contact us through the email flash on your screen. Finally, for tomorrow's session, please be reminded that the program shall start at 8 a.m. and we would like to request everyone to at least log in 15 minutes before the program. So before we end our activity for the day, please open your cameras for our group photo opportunity with our resource speaker. We'll be having uh, three shots in three, two, one. Another one, Bo. Smile in three, two, one. And last, last slide, Bo. Last frame in three, two, one. And Pussy, we'll sir, isa pa po. Last slide in three, two. One. <laughs> <laughs> yes, po. And that's it. Then concludes the second day of the online training for the Municipal Local Government Units on Republic Act 9184 and its 2016 revised implementing rules and regulations for Batch 1. This has been your facilitator, Janelle de la Cruz. Thank you and see you all tomorrow. Thank you, Vench. Thank you, Vench. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Salamat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.